একজন হলো আশিস দিন <laughs> 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 uh eminent panelist in bangladesh uh, we are today we are two favorite speaker 
with us, Dr. Diman Bonik and Dr. Ashok Dutt here. They will expert in this field, working uh, lots of years working in, the, in this field. I think they are the right person to talk about this topic. Today's topic, uh, I think, uh, most important topic for the fellows. Topic one is the coronary artery anomalies and catheter selection for anomalous coronary artery, ostia, and graft vessel angiogram. Dr. Dhiman Monik will talk in this uh, topics. And Dr. Ashok Dutta will talk very much important for the fellows. I think angiography view, severity assessment, and ideal CD repeating, reporting. So I, I requesting, I'm requesting Professor Dr. Abdul Al Chudri, please uh, opening uh, our session. Professor Wadud, sir, please. Professor Abdul Al Chudri, sir, do you hear me, sir? I think, sir. Sir. I think, sir. Uh, Officer, do you hear me, sir? Sir, unmute, sir. Actually, my network is very unstable. I have to go come again, connect again through hotspot. Uh, dear audience, very, very good evening. All of us are eagerly waiting for the lectures that should be given by Professor Dhiman Bhunik and Dr. Ashok Dutto. Oh, we are very glad to have them with us. And we are expecting that we have, we'll have a very interesting and very dis elaborate discussion on the views, the anomalous coronary arteries and other things that we should be talking about. I hope the young fellows, they'll be learning as much as we are learning we are going to learn today. And as Professor Mosin was saying, we have very eminent faculties with us from home and abroad. Dr. Professor Orun is uh, with us, along with the pioneer interventional cardiologist, the eminent cardiologist of this country. All of them are here. So, dear audience, without much ado, let us go into the lecture. Let us welcome Dr. Ashok Dutto, Dr. Dhiman I'm requesting for Dr. Diman Morik. Uh, you will talk on coronary anomalies and selection of catheter, the anomalies, coronary arteries, and gap patient angiogram. Dr. Diman Morik, uh, please uh, share your screen. Good, good evening, respected uh, moderator, honorable panelist teachers, colleagues, and friends. Today, my topic is on coronary artery anomalies, a catheter selection for cannulation of coronary ostia. And the next topic is uh, graft vessel angiogram. An anomalous coronary artery is a coronary artery that has an abnormality or malformation. The malformation is congenital and may be present at birth, and it is most often related with the origin of the coronary artery. There may be other defects serious in the coronary artery. Anomalous coronary artery may also uh, occur in other congenital heart disease, such as commonly with TOF, pathology of failures. Uh, the incidence of anomalous coronary arteries in some uh, different studies shows that they are uh, uh, less than 1%. In our hospital, uh, we perform a study of around 50,000 patients, 57,000 patients, from August 2007 to December 2016, which shows the incidence of anomalous coronary arteries is 0.65%. Uh, first, the anomalous of the left main, uh, the, the, uh, there may be absent left main, that is the separate ostia of the left anterior descending and the left circumflex. There may be aberrant location uh, of the left main from the left sinus of Valsalva, anterior or posterior, superior origin above the left sinus of Valsalva, uh, left main may arise from the right sinus of Valsalva. If arise from the right sinus of Valsalva, 
it uh, may have a different course arising uh, coronary artery uh, may arise from the pulmonary artery even these are the left main coronary artery takeoffs this is the horizontal takeoff of the uh, left main this is the inferior takeoff of the left main and this is the superior takeoff of the left main uh, now uh, the separate origin or uh, the absent left main absent left main is referred to as double barrel left main it is uh, said that it is it is most common coronary anomalies it is uh, around 0 0.47 percent uh, if uh, a subselective cannulation of only one branch uh, may be mistakenly lead that the other branch is occluded that is if you uh, cannulate the left the uh, uh, the led then lcx will not seen you may uh, have an idea that lcx is off, uh, occluded uh, in this type of variety if uh, for the led if there is separate left vein uh, separate led and lcx origin uh, the uh, for led you should take a one size small catheter uh, jutkin's left catheter for the led you uh, normally, if you want to do the left with four centimeter left Jutkins for a separate origin of the LED, you should take 3.5 centimeter uh, uh, left Jutkins. For the left LCX ostia uh, with uh, four left Jutkins with a left catheter from the origin and rotate counterclockwise. An M plus catheter may be useful or cannulating the uh, LCX ostium but it should be avoid it should be cautiously deal because it may cause dissection of the ostia of the lcx this is separate origin of the uh, uh, led you can see the separate origin of the led and the lcx and from the ostia of the lcx there comes the high om or the ramus and this is the same view of the patient uh, the catheter is slightly engaged into the lcx you can see the LED is not seen. A slight faint vision of the LED is seen. That it may be mistaken in this view. The uh, there is uh, the left main may be high uh, left uh, highly placed uh, left uh, uh, left main. It is usually high in origin. This can be cannulated by an M plus catheter. If the aortic root is wide, uh, in case of severe air or aortic root disease then uh, the uh, origin of the left is horizontal and the there is wide aortic root and this can be cannulated with jutkin left five or six or an m plus catheter or a voda shaped catheter posterior origin of the left main is uh though rare uh it, it may also be present uh slight counterclock rotation of the left jutkin's catheter may cannulate it. Left M plus may be used in this case. Now comes the anomaly of the left anterior descending. Left anterior descending artery arising from the right coronary cusp or proximal to the RCA. If uh, it arises from the right side, it usually follows two pathway, anterior free wall course or a septal course. And the, previously we have talking about left and LCX have a separate origin from the uh, left aortic sinus. We already described it. This is the LED arising from the RCA. This is the aleocranial view. Uh, you can see this is the LED and this is the RCA. This is the epicranial view uh, where uh, the LED, uh, this one is the LED as it is a septal branch. And this is the RCA. Now the anomaly of the left circumflex coronary artery. Uh, anomalous of the left circumflex coronary is the second most common coronary anomaly. It is about 0.45%. Uh, uh, left circumflex may arise from the right sinus of Valsalva. Uh, separate ostium of the left circumflex. There may be rudimentary left circumflex or absent left circumflex. Uh, if you, when you are doing the left side, when you say, see that there is, uh, you do the uh, left side, uh, cannulate the left main, and you see in the RA view, there is no LCX, or there is a rudimentary LCX. You should thought that 
LCX has a separate origin or LCX is coming from the right side. This should be kept in mind. Now, this is the separate origin of the LCX. It is the se separate origin of the LCX. This is another view of the separate origin of the X LCX. This is the LCX arising from the RC. I as previously told, when doing the right side, there is on the RA view, there is no LCX. Then you should keep in mind that the RC, the, this might come from the RCA. Uh, for this, you should uh, do that. You should uh, uh, non-selectively, you should give a, a shot on the RCA ostia. And you can see a faint line from the ostia uh, of the RCA. Uh, or from the separate origin uh, from the right uh, sinus. This is the from the RCA, this is the LCX, and this is also from the RCA, the LCX. This is the LCX from the RCA. RCA from the sinus, you can see the separate origin. This is the RCA and this is the LCX, all separate origin from the right sinus. This is, uh, you. It, when we can relate the uh, LCX, you, you can see that there is the RCA is faint. Anomaly of the uh, right coronary artery, uh, the anterior location uh, from the uh, right sinus of Valsalva, posterior, more posterior location of the right sinus of Valsalva, it is very difficult to cannulate. Arising from the left sinus of Valsalva, close to the left main, absent of right coronary artery that is uh, it is almost rare a super dominant left circumflex uh, these are the common uh, rca takeoffs this is the horizontal takeoffs this is the inferior takeoff of the rca and this is known as superior shepherd cook uh, uh, takeoff of the rca high uh, high up takeoff of the rca it is relatively high may require a left or right m plus catheter for cannulating the high takeoff of the RCA. When the aortic route is very wide, the patient should be, uh, uh, their uh, M plus or hockey stick catheter may need it for uh, cannulating the wide route of the uh, uh, wide sinus, wide aortic route. Uh, uh, Shepherd Cook, this is the Shepherd Cook RCA, RCA and it is tortuous and Right Jupkins catheter provides poor support in this patient when doing a, a PCI of this patient. So M plus hockey stick of a or arena catheter may provide better support of a such a distal lesion of a RCA. A M plus catheter will give a good support of doing this lesion in a Shepherd Cook RCA. RCA uh, from the left side, as you can see. Uh, the RCA is coming close to the uh, left main, and it is. Uh, this is the non-selective view. This view is very difficult to uh, selectively do the RCA, and it is also the non-selective view of uh, RCA and LED coming from the com close contact with from the left sinus of Valsalva. And uh, this is the AL one, M plus one, uh, 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 showing the. Uh, non-selective view of the RCA, and this is very difficult. You should be cautious in giving the dye and pushing the catheter, because uh, in this position, the ostia of the left main and the ostia of the uh, RCA may dissect. You might, dis uh, you might, we might dissect the uh, uh, ostia of the RCA or ostia of the left main. So this view is very much difficult uh, to take, and this is view uh, doing an PCI of this uh, a lesion, if lesion is present, it is very much, uh, it should be more careful. This is the, uh, uh, another view of uh, uh, cannulating non-selectively with uh, JL guide catheter, the RCA and the left, uh, left main coming from uh, left sinus and uh, with this, uh, Jutkin's left catheter, where we did the PCI of the proximal RCA. You can see there is a tight stenosis. Uh, we did the PCI uh, by, uh, by this uh, in this position with the Jutkin's left catheter. 
RCA arises from the left vein. That is the single uh, coronary artery. Uh, you can see uh, the RCA is from the left vein and uh, left system is from this and RCA arising from the uh, left system. Uh, this is a very uncommon uh, coronary art angiogram uh, from a single, uh, single coronary. It, it is the allocranial view. This is the LED. This is the RCA. This is the LCX. And it is the, uh, a, a, this is the ostia. This is the uh, un, uh, single coronary artery. This is the uh, uh, single coronary artery. Uh, another uncommon CAG, uh, uh, in this patient, we were almost uh, able to, uh, does not uh, able to do the coronary angiogram. The patient had right-sided aortic arch. Uh, we had changed many catheters. Then we uh, got, uh, we are thinking that, thinking other way. We d first did the venous, uh, then uh, we did the uh, venous side. We get the venous side. This is the brachiocephalic vein. This is the uh, superior vena cava. Then we gone through the pulmonary trunk. Uh, we suspecting the uh, coronary artery, either the coronary artery arising from the pulmonary trunk. Uh, we seen that there is no coronary artery from the pulmonary trunk. Then we again tried for the uh, coronary artery with the jail cat with left jutkins, and we seen that it is in the uh, grossly malpositioned area of the left side. And uh, we did the left side, it is almost normal. And this is the right-sided aortic arch. Uh, this is the right-sided aortic arch. So the uh, coronary has a uh, cross mal positioning of uh, left system. And this is the uh, RC of this patient. We have uh, by we have uh, canonized with the uh, right Jutkins. This is the right-sided aortic arch. This is the right. We can see this is the right-sided aortic arch. Now uh, the uh, graft vessel angiogram. Uh, uh, the graft vessel angiogram. Uh, about before starting the graft vessel angiogram. Uh, uh, I have some few uh, words with the depth of the problem with grub uh, vessel, uh, vessel. Recurrent ischemic symptoms appeared in 4 to 8% of post CAVG patient annually. Uh, superior uh, saphenous venous graft attrition is the most common cause up to 40% during the first year. 1 to 2% of the grafts occluded annually, uh, 1 to 5 years after surgery. About 10 years, about, about one half of the saphenous venous graft are occluded and half of the patent grafts are diseased. So, glove vessel angiogram should be done uh, with, uh, uh, with good, uh, with properly. Uh, uh, the, uh, first of all, the right coronary bypass venous graft, venous graft to the uh, right coronary artery. Uh, right coronary vein grafts usually can be cannulated with uh, GR4. The catheter is placed on the ascending aorta at the level higher than the expected level of the right coronary venous graft. And the catheter is rotated uh, up from 45 to 90 degree. And uh, the catheter tip move along the border of the ascending aorta shiloti in allo position. You should remind that uh, right-sided venous graft we should see in LO view, uh, ascending in the out, ascending outer shiloti, uh, in the LO view. In some cases, when uh, we cannot cannulate with uh, Jutkin right, then M plus or multipurpose may work. Uh, this is the uh, cannulation, this is the uh, venous graft to the RCA, and this is the cannulation of the uh, with GR4, GR catheter, or uh, the right venous graft. Uh, this, uh, this is the view of the cannulation of the graft to the RCA. You can see graft to the RCA, this is diseased uh, with a 
GR GR Jutkin's right catheter. Now, uh, graft vessel uh, to uh, by the uh, left anterior descending venous graft catheterization uh, or the left system venous graft. Uh, if venous graft is uh, given to the uh, uh, LAD, the uh, Jutkin's right catheter is placed at a level slightly higher than the expected level of the orifice of the anterior descending vein graft. About for 30 to 40 degree clockwise rotation is done here at the aorta, the tip, catheter tip will be pointing towards the right hand side of the ascending aorta. To the right hand side of the ascending aorta, in the aortic ascending aorta shillity, in the RA view, left system should be cannulated in the RA view. And the previously I have mentioned, the right system should be cannulated in the LA view. And if it does, it fails to cannulate, we can do it by an M plus catheter. Uh, the surgeons commonly uh, uh, give graft more proximal aorta, the OM, than the to the diagonal or to the LED, and more up to the uh, RCA. RCA is given more up in the aorta. And LCS venous graft is the same maneuver with LED venous graft. If uh, in sometimes it is very difficult to cannulate uh, this uh, venous graft, you can have an idea doing a non-selective root autography with a pigtail catheter. This is the uh, uh, this is the superior directed venous uh, directed vein graft of the OM. Uh, is seeing it is diseased. And this is also the superior vein graft to the OM. This is the uh, important uh, view of uh, cannulating the uh, different venous graft in different positions of the uh, root of the aorta. Uh, this is the A position is for commonly for the RCA or PDA. A PDA or PLV, and this is commonly cannulated by multipurpose shaped catheter. And this B is for the uh, OM or for the R, sometimes for the RCA. In this, if this in, in this position, it can be cannulated by multipurpose or Jutkin's right catheter. And if it is more anteriorly, almost in the middle of the aorta, acoustic. Uh, uh, catheter, left M plus catheter, or uh, right Jutkin's catheter may be helpful. And it is the uh, uh, venous graph in this position for the diagonal and LED. It is, uh, can be cannulated with a hockey stick or a left M plus catheter. Now the uh, uh, Lima graph cannulation. Lima graph cannulation, uh, 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 Origin, uh, Lima originate from the uh, uh, caudal wall of the subclavian artery, uh, distal to the uh, vertebral artery. The subclavian artery can be uh, 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 cannulated with, uh, commonly we, uh, uh, we cannulated it with 3.5 Jutkin's right. It can be cannulated with IMA catheter. For IMA catheter is specifically for uh, doing the Lima graft. Uh, this, uh, if the subclavian artery is tortuous, a J-tip wire or a terium wire may be helpful to guide the catheter to the subclavian artery. The important thing is that vigorous manipulation of the catheter and deep intubation of the IMA catheter to the lima, uh, to the lima should be avoided because it has a higher chance of dissection. The, if there is pressure damping, uh, it indicates potential dangerous deep ca cannulation. And it should be withdrawn uh, by counter clock rotation of the IMA catheter uh, from the ostia. During injection of contrast uh, uh, media, patient should be reminded uh, for a discomfort in the shoulder and anterior chest wall. During the uh, decan uh, 
disengagement of this catheter you should be this should be done in a fluoroscopic guide with a counter plug rotation of the ima catheter and slowly pull the catheter out this should be done again uh, i'm saying on fluoroscopic guide uh, this is the uh, lima cannulation uh, the view uh, in the upward uh, you, you can see we can uh, did not engage it, uh, die, it we, we give the dye by non selective view you see giving the dye from non selective view because the ostia to save the ostia this is the lima to led uh, then the uh, rima uh, cannulation uh, right internal mammary artery cannulation right internal mammary artery cannulation is more difficult than left internal mammary cannulation the right brachiocephalic trunk is entered with uh, the right jupkins catheter rotating the tip uh, counter clockwise to the brachiocephalic trunk and all the maneuvers i have told during the ima catheter in the lima this should be done in here also because you, we might dissect the origin of the rima uh, rima uh, artery this is the uh, a common slide i previously mentioned uh, uh, the guide uh, catheters uh, or the catheters uh, for led lesion uh, or led lesion jutkin left it is routine placement it is a good backup support or an m plus if the l if jutkin's left is difficult for rca jutkin's right of multi purpose or an rrd Uh, for tortuous RCA, M plus is the choice. It is excellent backup, but it deeply engaged and high chance of dissection is there. For doing a uh, left circumflex, left Jutkins, AL2, both are on multi-purpose may be taken. Uh, but for bypass graft, RCA graft catheter, circumflex catheter, uh, hockey stick, and Arani catheter might be an alternative. So. Uh, uh, so this uh, is my take home message coronary artery anomalies uh, should be considered when on routine angiography there appears to a missing coronary artery or a large area of the myocardium that is not perfused by visible vasculature it is an error to assume that the vessel is occluded when it is not been visualized because of anomalous origin it is the angio Graffer's responsibility to define accurately the origin and the course of the vessel. I deeply acknowledge uh, my mentor, teacher, Professor Folizza Fazila Malik, Nazi Sir, and Budhi Jaman Sir, of many of all my colleagues in giving me support of doing this uh, presentation because they are uh, thank. This is thank you from our cath lab team. Thank you all for patience hearing. Uh, thank you, Dr. Diman Mori, the excellent A-level presentation. I think you touch every aspect of anomalous arteries and gap vessel angiogram. Professor Wadud, sir, uh, your comments. Uh, Diman, it was a very good presentation, and you have uh, the most important thing is you have mentioned which uh, catheter to use where. But some other things should be said. Uh, on the right side. There may be double right coronary arteries, a rare, but this is an anomalous thing that is present sometimes. Again, sometimes the right ventricular branch or the acute ventricular branch that can arise separately from the ostia instead of the coronary artery that is coursing across across the uh, parallel to the right coronary and then giving rise to the acute ventricular branch. We just recently I have seen one. So these are also variations. Actually, there are so many variations in our lifetime. We have seen many of these things. As a whole, beautiful lecture. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Dr. Fazila Malik, Madam. Your lots of experience, I think, Please, uh, about the uh, anomalous uh, coronary arteries. Great presentation. Thank you, Madam. Few comments for the fellows. For the anomalous, anomalous, I think, uh, for the fellows, for the beginners, which catheter should be present in the cath lab? We say Jutkin's catheter. Which catheter should be uh, 
kept in in the cath labs. I think uh, Bhiman already mentioned most of the catheters. He did mention multi-purpose. Then he mentioned internal mammary artery catheter, XB Voda, and what else did you mention? Uh, so uh, I, I think the commonly uh, used catheters, amplugs he mentioned. But as a newcomer, I would be very, very hesitant to use an amplug. And if using amplug, one has to be extra gentle and the trough should be very, very gentle. Otherwise, there's always a chance that the amplugs might jump into the osti and cause dissection. So with an amplug, I'd be very careful. Uh, but uh, I think if uh, most of cases, a right coronary artery does help us a lot, right? What would you say, Dhiman? A right coronary, a multipurpose, these are safe catheters to use. Yes. Multipurpose is a matter of safe catheter. Yeah, very safe. Uh, but, but, any, but anyway, Madam, what uh, you told that is correct that uh, the uh, Amplaz is the uh, most notorious catheter for production of uh, uh, dissection. But anyhow, I am very much comfortable with the Amplaz because this is a beautiful catheter for any anomalous coronary artery. Amplaz may be uh, very much suitable for any anomalous. Either on the left side, you may have to take that two or uh, bigger size, uh, AL2. On the right side, AL1 or AL1.5, 1.75 like this. But Amplaz is a very good catheter in a safe hand. The so, most important thing is so for fellows, uh, uh, when you start using amplugs, uh, yeah, definitely for possible. the fellows, madam, uh, that yeah. told that is very important. Should not be uh, should not be used amplugs without the mentor. Thank you. Could I please uh, stop uh, stop sharing screen? Uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Porak Kargi, uh, he uh, he's lots of question from Dr. Porak from Nepal. Please put your question, Dr. Porak. Uh -huh. Do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Uh, thank you very much for such an excellent presentation. We learned a lot. Uh, what I wanted to know is it's always difficult to engage uh, the right coronary in uh, left sinus and uh, also uh, left coronary in right sinus. So what would be your advice uh, technique, the hand movement technique as well as the catheter, which how should we uh, go about uh, engaging those arteries? Manda. Uh, he, uh, from right coronary coming from the left sinus, uh, it is very difficult to do a selective view. Uh, you should uh, have more close to the, uh, I have shown that with an M plus, you should uh, do a uh, non-selective view with a cautious die. And uh, if you do want to do an uh, a PCI of this patient, you should do it uh, uh, First of all, giving the wires and then push the catheter slowly to the oste of the RCA. Uh, and in uh, doing a doing an anomalous left side is very difficult. And which catheter will uh, do uh, uh, will select the left anomalous uh, uh, left main? It, it is very much difficult. Uh, so in this case, also M plus may be helpful in doing the left anomalous uh, uh, coronary artery. Can I add something? Yes. For the fellows, yes, if you are thinking there is an anomalous origin, do a root aortogram. Have an idea what is the origin. And if you want to have, cannulate the right coronary artery from the left coronary sinus, another technique is use a five French, a little bit lower side, left jutki. Put it in there, then push it. If you push it, the primary carb will face on the right side towards the orifice of the right coronary arising from the left coronary sinus. And you can take and gauge the right coronary arising from the left coronary sinus using the JL. But there should be five feet so that it's softer, a little bit uh, lower side. Instead of 3.5, use the 3.1. Uh, can I add uh, one point uh, with Wadud? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, I like to um, share my experience. Most of the anomalous origin in cases, we uh, choose the diagnostic uh, uh, catheter. We for just review the angiograph and choose the uh, most of the time the JR, JL, very large size, particularly 4 or 4.5. Then push, push and close to the ostium in non-selective dye. 
and we always wear the anomalous origin by floating wire technique by floating wire technique wire is uh, shape uh, little uh, according to the ostium and then float float and due to flow it enter into the uh, anomalous origin of right or anomalous origin of left just when it just uh, if you took it to the ostium it uh, uh, readily it enter into the ostium due to flow then you uh, uh, push the catheter slow slow and uh, uh, until and unless just you visualize the catheter visualize the coronary artery lesion then you uh, stop the push and you do according to your the dilatation post dilatation and everything it is the guide okay. wire, not the dual guide wire. Hey, can i add some uh, points in favor of this yes i buy uh, I, i have to share a slide just uh, if you allow me yes uh, is it visible the slide no no uh, no oh, share no. share share yes. yeah. go to okay. slide share okay share share is free okay yes. have to to go to share is yeah is it visible now uh, yes visible yes. okay screen uh, let me share a picture uh, if you uh, do an angiogram in lao 45 degree uh, and uh, draw a line from left sinus to right sinus and another line vertically uh, then if, uh, uh, if this is the central two central lines if say uh, anomalous rca arising from the left sinus if it arises above the origin of the left main it is called la if arises from below it is called lb uh, Uh, same uh, uh, same if uh, uh, left arises from the right sinus above above the sinus it is ra and below it is rb for example if rca arises above this line from la position you have to use jutkin uh, uh, lab four size and sometimes you need to push part down to engage this catheter Uh, to engage from this position that is below the left uh, origin uh, you have to use xv3 catheter same in case of right side you have to use uh, 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 rca4 size catheter and one size below in this position in case of this position that means not in the mid line but posteriorly or anteriorly you can use m plus or multi purpose same also this position for this position uh, if we remember these tips we can uh, uh, we can save our time for and you can hi bhai who is on is the commonest site of origin of anomalous rca la is it the la yes can i add something yes madam yes so Uh, uh like uh, this is quite a few years back and we had an anomalous uh right coronary artery which was uh, arising left sinus and so what we did is and the origin of the right coronary artery was very near the origin of the left uh, coronary artery so what we and we had to do a pci for the right coronary artery because it had a severe stenosis so what we did is we took an x okay and we cannulated the left coronary artery now this left coronary artery is very near the anomalous right coronary artery origin then yes. we wired the left coronary artery okay and then we very gently disengaged the catheter and we sort of gave it a very gentle rotation so now it was the uh, mouth of the catheter was sort of towards the anomalous right coronary artery After this, we gently wired the right coronary artery, the anomalous yeah, coronary artery. So it was that basically is... we cannulated the normal left coronary artery, wired it, disengaged the catheter, rotated it a bit, so that now it started facing the anomalous right, right coronary. coronary artery that we had to fix. And only after it was yeah. slightly looking like that, we cannulated the right coronary artery. Thank you, madam. Uh, lots of questions from the uh, for the participants. Dr. Avida, do you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Please ask your question. 
I have a question to Dhiman sir regarding if we are unable to visualize the venous graphs during angiogram, so what are the other clues should we look for whether the graph vessels are actually occluded or not? Uh, first of all, you should do a, a, a root autography. And then if the root autography is not well bleached, then and an ascending auto autography can be done with a dye, more dye, and for long period of time, and doing uh, keeping the uh, acquisition in more more time, not a short period of time, and this is the, and and next of all, I, you can do a CT I, angiogram. Then you can may I may add angiogram. something, Dhamanda? Yes, yes. So, so uh, when you do the native vessel angiogram, first usually we do the native vessel angiogram. From the native vessel angiogram, definitively you should go through the uh, CAVG uh, operation note. Yes. Part yes. the graph, sir. That yes. is very important. Without seeing this, should not enter into the cath lab. First issue. Second, you should uh, do the native vessel angiogram. And with native vessel angiogram, and the previous CAG heart, the graphs are three or four or five graphs. Uh, and native vessel angiogram give you the idea that this uh, graft is closed. Suppose LED, uh, you are uh, getting a very good flow, 90% hysteresis in the LED that indicates either Lima or venous graft to the uh, LED is closed. Like this is OM is maybe uh, Timmy three flow in the uh, OM. So OM graph is closed. So this is first clue that you should remember always. Native vessel angiogram can give you the clue which graft is closed. Can I, can I modify it a little bit? Yes, yes. If you find native vessel angiogram, there is a competitive flow. Part of the OM is not seen to and fro. Yes, yes, yes. Part of the OM. That graft is actually open. Okay. And you have to find out the origin of that graft. Thank you, sir. Uh, Professor Monoji was with us. Uh, it's a lost experience about these anomalies. Professor Monoji, do you hear me, sir? Sir, you show uh, some cases from your archive, sir. Uh, yes, actually, I think uh, anomalies. Yes, sir. I think uh, this is a fellow's course. Yes, sir. Basically, oh, yes. if I want to show anything, it may not helpful for the fellow. A few words about uh, two parts. One is that your, uh, I'm sorry because I came late, enter late, so I missed the first part of uh, Dhiman's lecture, probably, as it's, uh, uh, really I missed that one. Um, anyway, the graph vessel, uh, the approach, my, uh, still my approach is femoral approach. Uh, I, I deliberately avoid uh, graph angiogram by radial route. Uh, because you need to delineate cl clearly about the coronaries, about the vessel. It's, it's not half-hearted. Uh, uh, it should be very much coaxially and selectively uh, cannulate all the graphs. So that, that is not really easy in, in a patient with uh, post CBD because moreover, the patient is elderly, having renal impairment, uh, may have a lot of atherosclerosis, the plaque the avatar need to uh, manipulate too many times can produce a spasm of the radial artery so lots of hassle you can clearly avoid if you go through femoral approach this is my first choice uh, second one is uh, the commonly uh, the catheter they have said is very good that do a root autography and, and as, as um, uh, Ashok said uh, you should know the which graft is where before entering the catheter. This is the very basic thing. And common catheter, mostly um, right-sided catheter can be um, done by right coronary or multi-purpose. Or rarely you may need a M plus catheter to hook selectively. But most of the cases, right jute case is enough to cannulate uh, almost all the graft. Uh, rarely I use uh, left uh, bypass uh, catheter, this separate catheter to hook IMA or uh, sorry, uh, OM or LED graft, venous graft. And for uh, Lima, 
I prefer to do it by uh, I make a setup. Reason that I said it must be very clear to everybody, yes. Because you will not uh, uh, given a second chance to complete the angiogram by some other time. So if you do it, do it perfectly, not half heartedly. I have seen a lot of people are doing radial angiogram in graph vessel. But honestly speaking, it doesn't give a very clear idea. Anyway, this part. Second part is the anomalous origin. Anomalous origin is really tough job, although it is only 1-2%, but even to me also, it's a hell of life. And uh, nowadays, because of the radial, is another problem too. But most of the time, Tiger catheter is a very nice catheter to uh, at least manipulate, uh, to give uh, the origin of both the native coronaries. And uh, really, I need uh, your LL catheter for the hooking the selective uh, right or left. But definitely, PCI, the fellow should not proceed to do PCI uh, in anomalous origin unless they are confident enough in regular routine angioplasties. Because if, if, you, if you do it, and the middle are working for more than an hour or so, but of zero outcome, it may not be a good practice to do so. And the patient also, he'll not be confident to do it by somebody else, some other person, because he'll always say, no, uh, somebody tried more than two hours and he failed, so I'm not going to do these things. So my request to the fellows, please, unless you are confident in handling the uh, routine diagnostic uh, routine angioplasty for all other non anomalous coronaries then only you should proceed for your pc i just i give two tips for not for the fellows two tips for the an uh, anomalous angioplasties in the right coronary artery using some special uh, devices uh, in that case i need to share it Uh, I think I'll have to come out, no? Yes, sir. I'll share have to screen. come out. Share, share screen. Share screen. Net. Okay, just a minute. I need to come out of this. Can you just give me two, two minutes? Okay. I'll come. okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, we are very much uh, grateful for Mr. Abdul Rahman with us. Yes. Sir, Mr. Abdul Rahman, sir, do you hear me, sir? Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. At the, at the midnight, sir. After, sir, you have to unmute. Unmute, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, and this is a really great program. And But the thing is that the webinar is so many and the, it is really difficult to attend sometimes and because uh, a lot of other things has to be uh, has to done. But if, if we can do every day, then it's fine. I think so the most important thing, whatever route, whatever catheter you use, you must do a proper view. That is adequate view. Unless yeah. you have delineated the distality, proximality, and anastomosis side, then the angiogram is incomplete. Because sometimes we are, do, we are seeing that most of the time we have seen it, especially in the radial route. Those who are doing radial route, it is incomplete. So we should do it. You can do it perfectly in the radial route. Definitely, no doubt about that. And regarding the AL catheter, that is a very friendly catheter that has to be used by little experience and that no doubt about what Pozilla mentioned that. But five friends AL may be a little softer. So it is not really difficult for that. Only tips has to be done that how you can disengage the catheter. That's most important. That has to be um, learned every, uh, I think, so fellows. Uh, otherwise, uh, whatever, that's the most important, whatever route are using that, you must do a proper angiogram. That is the basic of the angiogram. You should not proceed on angioplasty without doing a proper, proper angiogram. Most of the time you can have and do with the Dutkin catheter in 80, 90% case, but sometimes anomalous, that is a difficult. Now we can change the catheter, AL catheter, multipurpose catheter, whatever. But sometimes it is also difficult. The, when the surgeon putting a graph, no unusual places, some of the surgeon putting the graph in the unusual places, not all the time that, that uh, the usual site, what is recommended site, the surgeon is putting the graph. Sometimes maybe the calcification or other region, surgeon the putting the graph in a different places. In that time, Maybe the root angiogram, but problem is that if we do the root angiogram, a lot of dies here. 
So thank you very much. I think so this is a very uh, great discussion. I think so everybody is sharing each other and fellows will be benefited, no doubt about that. Now let us see your moment, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, we are uh, seeing, sir. Sir, move forward, sir. Sir, do you hear me, sir? Jamal Bhai, you have to unmute. You are uh, muted. Yes. Are you yes, seeing sir. it? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, recently I have done this angiogram. You see, the uh, right left coronary artery arising from the uh, right coronary sinus almost very close to the ostium of the uh, left, uh, right coronary. Uh, right, uh, sir, you, uh, you cannot see, sir. 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 Uh -huh. Cannot see, sir. Sir, sir. You're not seeing? You should select the, select the slide, sir. You have to double click the slide. Double click the slide, sir. Uh, double click the slide, sir. I'm, 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 it is moving here. No, not sir, no, that is not screen sharing. Share, that is not shared on the screen. Okay. So, then okay. I'll have to share it again. Yes, sir. Uh, anomalous. Is it? It's coming. Visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it visible? Yes, sir. You uh, big in stream. Okay, sir. Right, sir. Uh, is it visible? Yes. Yes, sir. Is it visible? Nice. Visible, visible sir. Yes. Okay, okay. Now, thank you. Then you can see that, that it is a tiger catheter and it selectively can relate the RCA and LSD also, uh, left coronary system is also arising from the ostia of the, uh, very close to the RCA and it is going posterior to the aorta. It's posterior to the aorta. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and, and, and it was, uh, this is the rudimentary left system. So uh, 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 you also make sure that although the patient is sent for surgery, uh, but you also give uh, to the clear idea to the surgeon that the left system is this. So that's why there's the left system. There's another interesting that the, the what problem we actually face while cannulating the anomalous. This is the first attempt with the RCA does not fit. Then use a multiple uh, um, AL2, does not fit. Then with a, uh, uh, this is a multi-purpose, it doesn't fit. So finally, uh, I did a, a root autograph that is missing here. That shows the uh, right is coming a little bit higher. So then only uh, a hook with the, uh, that uh, L1 catheter. So this way, trial and error, and surfing the where it is. So we'll have to uh, find out. Definitely, it is there somewhere, not from the original place, maybe some other places. So we'll have to surf it because no catheter is made purposefully for anomalous origin. So we'll have to manipulate the conventional catheter to coaxially align with the uh, anomalous origin. So this. Is, uh, at this part, actually, I said that this is not for the fellows, but they're very interesting for everybody. So this is the anomalous origin of uh, uh, RCA coming from the left coronary sinus. And I use the uh, AL2 catheter. Then I use a normal wire to wire it. Wire passed nicely. Just to get a better support, I took another wire uh, to have a better support of uh, the a guiding catheter. I tried with a 1.5 balloon. While pushing balloon, you see, the cathetering is coming out. So it was very difficult, even with 1.5 balloon. So then you can use a extension catheter to give a extra backup support to reach to the lesion. That actually I tried. This part actually I wanted to show. Yes, you can use the uh, 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 Godzilla to get a extra uh, backup support. Then after that, as usual, pre-dilatation uh, with uh, 1.5, 2.5, then 
there was a lesion proximally, then that part is the, finally I put two stents to the one for the proximal and one for the distal RC. This is uh, one technique of uh, doing uh, uh, animal. Regarding uh, this type of uh, RCA from close to the left, Sir, so what uh, Pujula Madam was telling, that is uh, very much useful sometimes, sir. Three uh, size means three carb uh, eggs be just uh, close yes. to the left main. Yes. Then, uh, then uh, that I, is... I'll uh, show that because, one also. That, because that the amplas, amplas usually does not take the shape, even after a long time. But uh, the... Yeah, yeah, that's is, uh, that's good. Yeah, this is this is another it, one. That, as because you say, XB XB takes one. the shape after after ten fifteen minutes. XB takes the shape very nicely, but M plus usually uh, is, does not take the shape even after one hour. <laughs> this is the actually actually you wanted to see. This is that one. Yes, it yes. Not, that uh, mad, madam was telling. This see? this is our this is our uh, usual technique that we used to do. So, so you see that, that the coronary is also coming high up from the left sinus. Here you can use the XB3. You are right. But here also it was not that easy to track the wire there. Yes, here yes. you can use a microcatheter. You can use a microcatheter, track with a floppy wire. It is a whisper wire. It's a, a easily tracked to the uh, proximal part of the lesion. I was lucky that lesion was not very proximal. Then it was been difficult. Then track the microcatheter down to that area. So if you go further, the guide catheter will come out. So you must be very careful. And and uh, uh, this just like this case that was a actually very tight lesion. I was assisting Pujila uh, ma'am. That time uh, we give a double wire, one wire in the RV branch and we anchored the RV branch with two millimeter balloon and then uh, catheter take a good shape and easily we did it. Yeah. That is a very good the, experience. That part is also here, you know, the, what you are telling. I took, <laughs> I took two wire and I di the dilate the balloon and the push the guiding catheter with the anchor balloon technique to hook it and make it coaxial. This is the ideal place where you can now do whatever you like. But keep in mind, it may undo again. Yes, yes. These two wire will help to stabilize the guiding catheter. No, actually, I was okay. telling that one wire in the RCA, other wire in the RV branch. And yeah. RV branch was anchored. That's the, the same or more or less same. Because the same thing. Uh, the same thing. So it will not only give a stabilization throughout the procedure, because you see that the way tracking the stent, very easy. Yes. And here also, you should not remove the wire, double wire. You keep the wire one after another. You see, yes, first yes. stenting, then the first wire was, second wire was proximal to the wire. Then again, mm -hmm. the second wire uh, removed and the uh, second stent was placed in the position. And then the, as usual. So this is two small uh, technique you can use uh, to, um, to. Thank you, sir, for sharing. Thank you, sir. Of the, uh, Thank you. Interesting, I am requesting the fellows. Uh, don't, 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 don't try that. Don't try. Don't, that. That. don't, don't, do, don't do it at home. <laughs> exactly. Not try. Another, another can add, uh, yes. Another, yes, sir. Sir, uh, I have done it twice in mortality and RCA. Uh, in one case, that was very early in 2005, I think, the left system was directing very near the floor of the left coronary sinus, and no catheter was getting engaged in there. So ultimately, I have been able to engage it with a tire catheter from the fibular node. And there was a very tight lesion in the LAD and that needs to be cannulated. I keep the catheter in there, put a exchange medicine guide where through the diagnostic yeah, I, I, I saw the, your presentation. In, in yes, the, tiger sometimes. In, uh, last last uh, two days back, I did the same thing with the tiger through the femoral root uh, anomalous RCA. That sometimes tiger helpful. is very good. Tiger guide tiger. catheter. Tiger guide catheter. Thank you. Thank you. Diagnostic Thank you. catheter, tiger is very good. And we, uh, to search the uh, anomalous. I, Thank you, sir. Uh, with the, uh, lots of questions of fellows. Dr. Shweb, uh, do you hear me? Dr. Shweb? 
Uh, yes, sir. Uh, for the fellows, please ask your question. Yeah. Uh, hey, thank you, Mohsen, sir. Uh, yeah. Thank you, RBDI. Uh, thank you, uh, Biman, sir, for your uh, brilliant uh, presentation. Sir, uh, you uh, talk about the ectopic uh, coronary artery origin. Uh, what about coronary other anomalies, coronary artery uh, aneurysm, coronary fistula, coronary artery breeze? Is this a, a less common or rare? And um, this, uh, well, I'll show you. I will show you the coronary artery uh, anomaly. That, will that be was a, the uh, different chapter. It, it is the lecture about the coronary ostium cannulation. Ostium cannulation, actually. Yes. Okay, sir. Right, is it? Yes. Uh, we're missing the dead part of the uh, anomalous. I think yes. Dr. Kasudotto will show this. Uh, yeah. Dr. Dr. Mahmoud Ali, do, uh, do you, Dr. Mahmoud Ali, do you uh, hear I, me? I, I, I have another yes, question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, show him. Yeah. Another question. Uh, it's a primary question. Uh, for a beginner or uh, inexperienced operator, for first time, uh, is, uh, you, you showed the specific uh, catheter. Is This kind of uh, catheter is not available in the cat. Uh, what should he, uh, he do? He postponed uh, the uh, angiogram or he uh, tried to uh, do something else? It can take care from the seniors. Right. Always ask the senior. Always call the senior. Yeah. At least, at least give a root autography. Yes. At yes. least you should yes. finish it. If you do not calculate, do a root autography. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Khalid Mosin, sir. Dr. Khalid Mosin, will you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Sir. Uh, thank you. It's a very uh, good presentation from uh, Dr. Diman. Uh, I have just a few points to uh, emphasize. Uh, when we are doing a Lima graft angiography, don't forget about the proximal subclavian. If yes. there is proximal subclavian stenosis, it will render the graft useless. So please include the proximal subclavian artery if you consider that the patient has got an ischemia in the LED territory. It is, it is, it is very important. Yes. And number two is uh, regarding the coronary anatomy, the one very important variant is the left os coronary anatomy, uh, the left uh, uh, coronary origin from the right sinus, and it is passing between the pulmonary artery and the outer, and it mm -hmm. is be compressed and yes. can produce an intractable ischemia. And these are very difficult to detect by the uh, conventional coronary angiogram. In those cases, I think the CT coronary angiogram can give us a better clue. Uh, other way, other way, motion, sir. Uh, one thing uh, the, uh, that we used to do, we do the venous puncture to take catheter in the pulmonary artery and take a lateral view. So whether it is going in front of the catheter in the pulmonary artery or behind the catheter in the pulmonary artery, give the clue whether it is anterior to the pulmonary artery or RB, that is anterior to the RB or behind the pulmonary artery. Yes. And another but thing, it is it is preferable to do CT angiogram. Yeah. CT angiogram. Yes. And yes. Days, the surgeons are uh, doing some innovative work, like that they are putting the jump graft, they are putting the Rima Lima Y graft. So we have to uh, have some added uh, innovations in uh, imaging this graft because their graft is going simultaneously in two directions. So we have to image it in a very meticulous fashion. And in sometimes in a Lima graph, we can see that there is an accessory branch, it's going somewhere. And the majority of the flow from the Lima flow, it is being diverted to any other direction. So we have to uh, embolize those uh, vessels. So we, this has to be uh, uh, imaged very meticulously. If there is a, a, a additional branch of Lima, it is going somewhere else. So these are the things we have to keep in mind. And the lateral view, when uh, we are, we seeing want to see the anastomotic site the lateral view of the lima graph to led is a very mandatory the frontal view is not uh, giving all the information so we have to include the lateral view as well uh, when we are imaging the lima to led graft thank you thank, thank you dr kaisan dr kaisan masulakhan do you hear me yeah yeah yes. um, assalamu alaikum and good evening to all and thank you again, IPDA, for arranging such a basic Catlin manual series and also uh, trying to pull out all the legends like uh, uh, prof uh, Professor Momin Jaman, uh, Professor Fajila Malik, Professor Abdul Rahman. 
uh, and and Dhimanda's lecture was fantastic. It was elaborative, descriptive, and vivid. I learned a lot from Dhimanda, and I, I I want to tell one thing today. I have not come across such a beautiful, uh, many broad-hearted person like Dhimanda in my life. He's such a simple and very good person. Uh, one of the good person I've seen. About Anoma, I must say that yes, uh, there should be a, a, you know, expertise of an intervention cardiologist, uh, annulating an anomalous arteries and doing intervention to it. And everybody has said everything, but I would like to say to the fellows that you should keep, apart from your normal catheter, L1, a, a, L2, AR2, um, multipurpose, and also sometimes you might need left bypass graft catheter as well and lima. And about the uh, anomalous artery, I, I have seen one or two cases in my life, just to sharing my thoughts, that uh, there's a graft of gastroepiploic artery to inferior, uh, I mean, uh, right coronary artery, right, right coronary PDA. And I, I have to uh, hunt it for like one hour to uh, uh, take the graft and take a picture. So when I, you have to know uh, first what you're dealing with, especially when you're do, doing the cabbage cases, you should know what are the grafts, where are they from, and you should go with the surgeon's note. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of people are waiting for question. Uh, please uh, comment, sir, sir. Uh, one thing we should be always putting attention, whenever we are seeing a graph, we have to see two things, the origin and the course. And the second point is the attachment point to the native vessel. For Lima, the epicandial view will show you the course of the graph, but the attachment is seen in the lateral view. That's what uh, somebody can emphasize. For right sided grafts, the cranial views will show the course, uh, uh, the epicranial view will show the attachment better. And the usual uh, uh, cranial, view, uh, uh, cranial view will show the course of the artery. You have to be very careful about the attachment and the course. Thank you, sir. Dr. Mahmoud Ali, Dr. Mahmoud Ali, please, please put a question. Yes, sir. Dr. Mahmoud Ali, yeah. Uh, thank you, Dima sir, uh, for the wonderful credible presentation for the fellows. I have two questions. Uh, one is the which route is the best uh, for cannulation of the uh, graft vessel, which was cleared by the Mohanizam sir. And I have a uh, which uh, it is possible to the graft vessel cannulation uh, through radial approach, right radial approach. And I have another question. In case of anomalous coronary artery uh, visualization, we uh, use the ARG. Catheter. In these cases, what precaution we should take to prevent the osteal dissection? Professor Dr. Mohammed Saidi Rahman Khan, do you hear me? Professor Mo Dr. Mohammed Saidi Rahman Khan, please unmute. Please unmute. Uh, yeah. Please uh, comments uh, regarding the questions. Yeah. I tell you yes. for the uh, cabbage graph. Yeah. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks to Dr. Devanda uh, from Dhaka Medical College, my senior fellow. And uh, whatever you're telling that, as uh, beginning 10 years with my femoral exposure and the last 10 years with radial exposure, so I can tell that even for anomalous origin and for graft study, I think the transradial route is, uh, the, is possibly the better option. And uh, again, for anomalous origin, especially, uh, we have the 5 pinch stick catheter and 5 pinch other diagnostic catheters, which are softer and rather than the 6 pinch catheter. So it can be manipulated rather very well. And uh, for graft study, the left radial approach is the best one, not the right radial approach. Never for the payloads. Until and unless you have supplement stenosis or something like that, and you can't go with left radial, then you can go for the right radial approach. But it's really very difficult to cannulate the lima proper, proper. You can, but sometimes it's very hard if really there is toxicity is there from right to left. So, but 
feel in that case when you can for any sort of uh, graph studies any sort of graph studies which i usually follow is that the native rca should be emulated first to see the where is the native rca at which level of the knot at the same view and from that knot level you can go up and you can see that in each knot or near the graphs should be above the radial uh, above the native rca so always count the knot and, and the position in between the knots where it is so it will be very easy for this and usually in my practice uh, the for graph study i usually use the peak catheter first uh, to do the native LED, uh, left system and right system and then later on i also go on with the i don't like too much catheters to me so i go on with the stick catheter if it becomes very much difficult then i take usually the jr and that means left five french catheter and that one is better not the cordis five french rather than i take the five french terumo catheter the five french terumo a bit uh, longer curve is there and it can reach the rca graph very easily which uh, dr diman has already shown that it is in the lateral part and the, for other graphs also uh, just you have to manipulate uh, very carefully and be anteriorly and you can get the other graphs usually in all the times if you can't then you have angiogram and uh, uh, iotogram and after iotogram you can find out the, where the graph is and uh, for anomalous origin of uh, any uh, any left or right anomalous origin obviously the transradial approach i feel much comfortable with the transradial approach okay. thank you dr shudakar yarmi dr shudakar shorgar yeah dr shudakar please unmute yourself nice program for young fellows sir i would like to know th- you know sir what are the tips and tricks for using amplus catheter to prevent injury to the ostium of the coronaries and as a young fellows we are usually afraid of taking uh, such catheter during diagnostic procedure thank you dr arun maski do you hear me dr arun maski yes yes yeah. so yeah. so most important thing is uh, if you are engaged uh, amplus when you pull down it engages when you are pulling up it engages that's very important and when you are disengaging catheter push down the catheter is disengaged and turn counter clockwise so never pull the catheter so important thing is if you push down it engages and if you pull down if you push down and turn clockwise it engages and when you are disengaging push down and turn counter clockwise that's very important another one thing is if you are not very sure if you are doing angioplasty put the wire into the uh, coronary arteries then push down disengage and take it both out so that's what we have to do and this is very delicate for experienced people is very good for beginners i would advise not to use amplasia catheter it's very dangerous thank you any anybody can comments to provide sir uh, comments amplasia catheter or mohit yeah. sir yeah original thing no, no. basically as uh, there's in some time you need no other option yes no other option uh, you will have to cannulate with if you cannot yes there is option if you need somebody around you you can take assistance from them but definitely you should gently practice to use the amplus catheter as maski said the safe best way safest way because its shape is such it will sit on the left sinus and the catheter tip will be towards the ostium so if you pull it 
it will engage and if you pull it it will disengage so you should try but you should gently try and always pull it under fluoroscopic guide just once you engage it then you just push it it will engage if you want to disengage you push and either clockwise or counterclockwise is disengaged from the ostium then pull i think uh, that is the best and the only way to you can avoid any catastrophe especially a patient with ostial lesion uh, led uh, ostial lesion left main uh, can be injured with this catheter so the other part is other part is do not use amplasma catheter if you find ostial lesions yeah. that's another right. thing thank you thank you excellent comment sir so we go for the next yeah but uh, uh, just one comment for yeah. the ostial lesion gel is the safest one not even xp okay. the safest even one. even for ostial lesion you just don't try to coaxially engage yes if you are sure you give a flash if you see the critical left main ostium you, you don't need to can wait Uh, to see the detail of LED, detail of LCX, no, no, detail about the ostium and non-selective angiogram is enough to identify. Make sure it is not a spasm. Make sure. So one comment about graft is the origin, uh, the level of graft. The classical teaching is the highest one is OM graft. Yes. Then diagonal, then LED, and to the right is uh, RC. So this is one how if you get one graft, then you will have an idea where to move up and down. So this is another classical teaching. Yeah, Dr. Mohsen. Yes, Dr. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, just, uh, uh, I want to say uh, just one thing. If you, if, you, if the fellows, uh, because uh, AL plus is a very crude catheter. So for the fellows, uh, uh, this is used, this should be the last option or because because whenever the anomalous origin or the graph study you are in desperation if you are in desperation like if the is taking one hour even to do an angiogram then you are desperate and you are using lots of catheter and you are manipulating it in such a way so you are taking the amplus in such a way that it may cause a devastating thing there so for if you use the femoral approach then amplus can be softly handled well because uh, you can push the line a little bit soft and gentle approach is possible but if it, you are using radial approach you don't need amplers you have icari you have uh, xp you have even gel guide catheters not the angiographic diagnostic catheter. the guide catheters will help you to cannulate and to do an angiogram you don't need the amplers that much i think i think uh, side is a good thing radial approach they really i re forget to remember whenever i use amplers um, if At all, you can use uh, Judkins. Yeah. Yes. Ninety ninety five percent you can come over with the Tiger, and five percent maybe Judkins. Uh, L J uh, Judkins three, preferably three, because it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, Doctor Diman Diman Monik, sir. Diman Monik. Another lecture, no? Presentation, uh, and also all the panelists. Lots of question, but we uh, already one and half hour. So we got next important topics. What the fellows? Fellows never entered this the cat lab without knowing this. Just all the fellows should know angiography view and ideal CG report. I think uh, for the fellows, please learn this uh, lecture from the Ashutosh Dutta. He is the right person. He is learned person. Ashutosh Dutta, please share your skin about the angiography view and uh, ideal CG report. Then we again come to the our. Another panelist. Mohsin, I think Mas next time, next time I think one lecture is uh, you should accommodate because yes, there is no hurry. There yes. are a lot of discussion, a lot of question you are not answering because definitely there are a lot of question in the script. Yes. So I think. Mohsin, is it is it simple? Yeah, yes, is it the it most sin? important topics. Yeah. Is it simple? Yes. 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 Yeah. Well. So. uh honorable chairperson moderator panel of expert and my dear teachers my topic is angiogram 
coronary angiogram, not the other angiogram, views Sorry. Coronary angiogram, its views, severity assessment of the coronary artery disease, and ideal reporting. I think this is very important for the fellows because sometimes it is asked, and this is the uh, things that you should know uh, to start the angiogram. What are the different view or projection? This is the anterior posterior view, other is the oblique view. Anterior posterior view may be straight, may be cranial or caudal, and oblique view may be on the left or on the right side. Both sides that may be the straight LO, may be LO cranial, LO caudal, and on the right side, same, RO straight, RO cranial, or RO caudal. So uh, we call it AP, but actually this is a misnomer because in conventional X ray, the X-ray tube, that is the X-ray uh, machine is here, the film is here. In our cat lab, this is the X-ray, and this is the II, that is image, image intensifier, that is equivalent to the film plate. So truly it is the PA view, but uh, we are, we are uh, calling it AP view. And other thing is LAO and RO, all time, the X-ray tube is below the patient. So it all the views are anterior only. There is no posterior view. So it is uh, conventionally used LAO, RAO, but actually all are left or right oblique. Next, these are the view. Cranial views are taken usually at 30 to 40 degree cranial, maybe on the left or right, and caudal view better to take at 30, 20 to 30 degree. And for lateral, that is LA or RO lateral, that varies from zero to 90. Zero to 90 for lateral, but for cranial or caudal, usually 30 to 40, 20 to 30. This is the uh, common thing that should uh, remember. Next, these are the uh, uh, physical, physically, uh, if you just, uh, make it clear for the fellows, it is uh, very easy. If the, this is called II, if it, the II is towards the right shoulder of the patient, this is the areocranial. If it is on the left shoulder of the patient, towards the left shoulder of the patient, it is the allocranial. If it is on the, towards the left hypochondrium of the patient, it is the allocodal. And this is the RO caudal when II is on the right hypochondrium. And remember, always the lateral view, that is the when, uh, I'll go in later. So this is the standard view for left coronary system. In four quadrant, four view. First is the, usually started with RO caudal, then allocardal, then RO or epicranial, and lastly, allocranial. Always remember, allocranial view is visual, visualization is less and huge amount of radiation. Highest dose of radiation you will get because the extra tube is here close to you. So this is the RO caudal view for the left system. In RO caudal view, this is sometimes limited value for mid and sometimes proximal LED because it's superimposed by diagonal and septal branches and important for distal LED. Sometimes for RO state is better for distal LED for TIMI flow and used for TIMI flow. Obtaining an optimal image of the proximal and mid circumflex and bifurcation with its branches of the OM, this is the best view and this is the working projection for the left circumflex OM and ramus intermediates because less respiratory movement and good extra penetration and excellent image quality in this view. Next come to the spider view. Actually this number is not important here. 25 or 40 that number is not important. Most important thing is the clear clarification of the image. Left main ostium may be masked in the aortic sinus contrast. Left main is foreshortened in this view it offers greater separation of the LED, LCX, and RAMUS. 
Low X-ray penetration in obese patients make the film grainy appearance. LED ostium at the proximal lesion with diagonal and ramus are well visualized and mild to mid to distal LED are foreshortened. But for the LCX, proximal LCX is well opened in this view. In all other view, these parts remain foreshortened. And this is the view that is used for wiring during PCI, both for LCX and LED. Now, epicranial view. This is the working projection for LED mid and distal. Proximal LED is overlapped by circumflex branches. No need for breath holding for the patient. And distal LED is foreshortened here, which is better visualized in RAO state. And this is the view for PL branch. And this is the yellow cranial. This view separates the proximal to mid LED from the diagonal and septal branches. Diagonal usually runs on the right and septal branches usually runs on the left. And projection of choice for dominant circumflex. For mid circumflex, as well as distal circumflex, left PDA and also left PDA and also for PL branch. And these are practices, the spine here and the diaphragm. So sometimes the crescent between the spine and diaphragm, if the uh, coronaries can be fall in this group, that is uh, better visualized, especially for LAD. It would be allocranial. This is allocranial, actually. No, oh, yes, sorry, sorry. That is the allocranial, sorry. Little view for red coronary artery. As already been mentioned by our previous uh, uh, panelist, Lima to LED graft must be visualized, especially for the distal anastomosis size for visualization. And for this view, positioning actually very much difficult because patient's hand should be above or below the head of the patient and it is not comfortable for the patient. And nurse has to remove their infusion set and to relocate it. So this is not a uh, advanced uh, projection, uh, not a good projection. And sometimes eccentric lesion in the proximal mid LED may be better exposed here. And this gives nine times more radiation in compared to any RAO view. This is the standard view for RCA. Initially RAO, uh, LAO 30, then LAO cranial and RAO 33. These three view are the standard view for right coronary artery. What are the supplementary view for the right coronary? Left lateral and RAO is straight, no cranial or no caudal angulation. Like RAO cranial, this PDA, septal branches and collateral to the LED are well senior, but PL branch may be overlapped by the branches. Mid RCA, Right ventricular branch, acute marginal branch, and, orig and their origins are well delineated here. It is, it is especially important when there is uh, separation of the right coronary, uh, mid coronary from the RV branch is difficult. On the other hand, left lateral view sometimes, though it gives a uh, lot of radiation, is especially important for mid arcillation because sometimes intermediate lesion, eccentric lesion, only be visualized in this view. And both arm of the patient should be kept over or under the uh, head of the patient for better resolution. What are the standard supplementary views or projection? There is no standard projection that can always give the complete information. It is not the degree of angulation or skewing. That is the important, but anatomical clarification and proper visualization of the coronary artery, especially the main vessels and their major branches, including the ostium of the branches are important. And overlapping and foreshortening of the particular segment may mask, may mask the lesion. And overlap of the adjacent vessel, spine, diaphragm, and sometimes implanted device can be minimized by changing the angulation and skewing. And foreshortening can make mask the lesion severity of the lesion and sometimes underestimate the lesion length during the PCI. These are the tips to avoid the foreshortening and overlaps. View that uh, are important to avoid the foreshortening, like proximal L6, yellow caudal view, that will avoid the foreshortening. For mid to distal LCX, for dominant vessel, yellow cranial view, for distal LED, RAO cranial view is very important for uh, opening of the distal LED, RAO cranial view. And for PL branch, 
epicranial. For mid RCA, it is the lateral view. In vertical heart, that sometimes happen in tall and thin patient and COPD patient. The RO is more RO with more caudal angulation. And in horizontal heart, like obese patient, patient with big heart like cardiomyopathy, that apex is, this is easy to remember, for the fellow it is important because in uh, horizontal heart apex is directed towards left. So you will have to go LAO with more lateral. Uh, on the other end, in the vertical heart, heart is more horizontal, apex is uh, downward. So you have to go RAO with more caudal direction, means uh, downward. In general, caudal views are useful for the circumflex and proximal LED and cranial view are important for mid distal LED and for RCA. This is the general approach for angiographic view. All the interventional cardiology should be clinician first. Clinical information regarding history, clinical features, ECG, echocardiography, stress test, and risk factor must be interpreted before angiogram and should be correlated with the angiographic findings. Main purpose of angiogram is for diagnosis, but ultimate goal may be the PCI or cabbage. Many cases, angio may be completed in two views on the left for the left coronary artery and on view on the right coronary artery. Suppose patient with valvular heart disease prior to the surgery, patient for permanent pacemaker, patient with severe LB systolic dysfunction, sometimes adult congenital heart disease before surgery. On the other hand, patient with CTO, some complex bifurcation lesion, especially when intended for PCI, symptomatic patient with apparently looking normal angiogram, may need greater number of views. Focal eccentric lesion sometimes missed or underestimated in on view. And proper visualization in orthogonal view means if it is seems to be not significant in the left-sided view, you may have to go on the right side. So that is the orthogonal view in the 90 angle, 90 degree angle. What are the modern approach for selecting a standard projection? Patients Clinical status definitively important after taking the first angiographic view. Instant interpretation of the image usually help to decide the subsequent projection that might be crucially important. So after taking the first view, you have to decide which view is more important for the next. And mature operator, including technician, actually technician uh, have got the greatest role here, should be aware that possibility of subsequent revascularization by either PCI and CABG. And sometimes what Mominojaman sir was telling, the angiogram is done, but subsequent decision taking become very much important. Suppose mid LED has got a very tight lesion but ostium of the LED cannot be seen and seems to be there is mild lesion, but that mild lesion does not need any uh, intervention, but that is the way through which you have to go many times, wire, balloon, stent, so that make the uh, plaque unstable. So that is very important, always. So always keep in mind, possible subsequent revascularization, uh, that should be kept in mind. And for CIBG vessel, distal vessel visualization is more important because that is the site for grafting and it's distal runoff. On the other hand, angiograph, if you, angioplasty is the intention, proximal lesion complexity is more important to deal with stenting. Modern approach, that same thing. So accordingly, subsequent views are selected. A small test pub of contrast is very useful before taking the senior acquisition. So that little change of projection can remove the overlapping branches and focus the desired segment. And after taking the standard four or five projection for the left, three projection for the right, additional or supplementary views might be taken when it is essential for clarif clarification of the lesion. Keeping in mind that clinical safety of the patient, radiation safety for the operator, and additional information that you are gaining, that should be, that should be keep in mind. So this is why multiple views are needed in some symptomatic patient. This is the patient post CAG. Six months back, angiogram was done in the mid RCA. Now he admitted with acute coronary syndrome, toponin I was raised. There was ECG change in the inferior leads and there was inferior hypokinesia. But left side was totally normal. Right side apparently seems to be normal. But after taking four, five 
views. This view only shows that there is a eccentric plug in the distal RCA and that is very tight. So that is very crucial to go back to the clinical PCR, go back to the ECG eco findings like this. Sometimes two or three views is sufficient. What Mamino Jamasar was telling. This is the patient with uh, gross STTOF change in all the lids. Patient has got class four angina. So that was done through the transradial. After first view, that was non-dominant right coronary artery. To take the second view, there is dominant LCX. In this case, the last view that we can take to see the distal and mid LED is the epicranial. But if you want to see the LCX for dominant LCX, if you want to see another view for allocranial, that may make the diff uh, things difficult, like spasm, dissection, patient may become collapse on table. A typical view sometimes may unveil the critical lesion. Sometimes we say this is the RO caudal, see the LCX. This is the epicranial, so see the LED only. But sometimes epicranial, this is the LCX lesion that is not well seen here. Though this is the uh, standard view for uh, LCX, but this lesion is seen in other view, which is standard for LED. So that should that should be uh, very much important. Now assessment of the severity of coronary artery disease. And this is the assessment can be done by angiographically, by eyeball estimation or QCA, intervascular imaging by IVAS or OCT. That may be the functional assessment. Sometimes in intermediate lesion, we need it by FFR or IFR. And clinical assessment in all cases, that is very important. Eyeball estimation, angiogram is actually luminogram. There is a lot of inter-observer and intra-observer variation. Inter-observer means same person before seeing the previous report, before seeing the patient, and before taking the history of the patient, may say some lesion is around 70% uh, or, uh, sorry, 60%. Uh, but when he saw the ECG change is there, patient is severely symptomatic, that lesion he will tell it it is 75, 80%. So 10, 20% variation may be here. So this is true, especially when the lesion is less than 70%. There is inter-observer variation is 20%. But when the lesion is very much critical, like 80, 90%, then variation will be reduced to 10% only. And that is, also, that is true for uh, LB ejection fraction uh, measurement also. And there is other thing that is called oculostenotic reflex. That is important issue that uh, may give rise to uh, increased tendency to stenting after seeing the lesion without seeing the previous report, without taking the history, the stress reports and other. And uh, that is actually uh, sometimes not logical without uh, uh, indication. And the other thing that is just opposite to this oculoisternetic is the oculo ischemic reflex. Means ischemia is the region why you are doing the angioplasty. In case of borderline lesion, eccentric complex lesion, it is not, uh, it is not good. That is, eyeball estimation is not good in certain cases like eccentric plaque, complex lesion, borderline lesion. Then IVAS, OCT, a paper might be helpful. QCA, this is the analysis soft, this is the actually inbuilt software comparing the catheter diameter with the uh, catheter diameter is the standard unit and compare the catheter diameter with the length of the uh, lesion as well as diameter of the lesion. So this is the QC analysis. Sometimes it is very much useful, especially when the vessel is straight. Uh, length measurement is very much accurate. Even diameter measurement is also very much accurate. And it can give the area of idea about the diameter stenosis as well as percentage of cross-sectional area stenosis. Two things is different. So here is the uh, gram that shows the di diameter stenosis. Uh, so maximal diameter, healthy diameter is around three. Here is the uh, showing the area of stenosis. So these are two things that should be correlated with each other. 
so this is the severity of lesion. One thing the fellow should remember that we usually calculate 70% stenosis or more. That is the critical lesion less than 70 is moderate, less than 50 is mild lesion. That is the diameter stenosis not the cross-sectional areas, cross sectional areas, CSA. This is not the CS. Around 50% uh, diameter stenosis represent that the cross-sectional area, uh, area diminish is 75%. So histologically, that will be 70% stenosis if we do the QCA or if we do the IVAS or OCT. If the lesion is 75% diameter stenosis, that is equivalent to 95% stenosis histologically and by uh, IVAS. And if it is 80 or 88 or 90 percent, that is equivalent to nearly 99 percent stenosis of the uh, lumen. And this is pitfall of the uh, coronary angiogram as well as eyeball estimation, uh, as well as sorry, uh, QCA. Suppose this is a patient, this angiogram is done. Uh, you started this patient, severely ischemic patient. If you see the left main, if you do the QCA of the left main, that will measure the left main and that will show the left main is around three millimeter diameter and throughout the left main, there is no significant lesion, maybe 20, 30%. But if you compare the OM branch, that is close to the uh, diameter of the left main, and maybe a bit, bit uh, larger than the left main, that is around three millimeter. So as we know, the left main diameter usually two third of the uh, diameter of the LAD plus LCX. So if LCX is three, LAD is three, left main should be at least four millimeter. But here the left main diameter is close to the no. catheter, close to the catheter diameter. So this is the drawback of this uh, QCA. Here, eyeball estimation is better because we can uh, see all the things together. We can compare the vessels all together. But in QCA, only the particular segment uh, can be uh, measured and can be assessed. And in case of diffuse disease, when we compare with the adjacent segment diameter, the stenosis may be underestimated. So ideal reporting for CAG. This is very important. All the things, all the payloads should remember. Clinical diagnosis, ECG, ECO, risk factor, root of the procedure, catheter used, and sometimes special hardware if it used, time that required for angiogram and fluoroscopy time, description of the coronary artery, anomalous in origin, if any, that should be, definitely that should be mentioned, that will help in uh, subsequent PCI or subsequent angiogram. Lesion with that description. Timmy flow, procedure uh, related complication and recommendation also. So this is the ideal reporting. This is not actually the this is the reporting that is randomly collected for a more cath lab. This is the diagnosis acute MI inferior risk factor is hypertension, diabetes, and others is not there. ECG shows inferior uh, leads Q wave, echo shows 38% rejection, fraction with moderate MR, and root of uh, angiogram is transfemoral. If we see this angiogram, I have highlighted the some points that you should remember, and if each and every point you should know about everything of this point you should know. On this High percentage stenosis. There is mid segment, so there is also other segment, proximal, mid, distal segment. This is the dominant of the RCA type B lesion, and ultimate uh, comment is triple vessel disease. Recommendation is revascularization. So I will describe the uh, what is type four vessel, what is dominant vessel, what does it means 90, 95 percent. This usually in diameter, not the area cross-sectional area. This is the mid-segment. There is a, a classification of the segments of the coronary tree out at the type B lesion, type A lesion, and type C lesion. So this is the type 
pop LED on to pour and dominant may be left, right, or may be co-dominant. This is the ischemic presentation type on. If we see, this is the LV, this is the apex. Echocardiographically, this is the apex, this is the epico anterior, and this is the epico inferior or inferior surface distal segment. Usually, the type on LED that does not goes up to the apex. So supply the anterior wall and anterior wall only, and anterior part of the interventional IVS. In type two, it will go up to the apex, but never supply all part of the apex. It will supply the anterior wall, interventricular septum, anterior part. And in case of type three, it will supply up to the of the apex means whole apex septum as well as anterior wall and in case of type 4 it will replace part of the pda so it will cross the apex goes into the inferior wall and supply the part of the distal part of the inferior wall as well as posterior part of the interventricular septum Dominant usually the, that is uh, taken from the Brunold. That is the I think best definition of right dominant, left dominant, and co-dominant vessel. If you see, this is the right coronary artery. This is the PDA. This is the PL branch. This is the left do dominant vessel. Right. This is the PL branch means posterior left ventricular branch. This is the PTA. If th this two comes from the left side, means LCX, this is the left dominant. If both comes from the right side, this is the right dominant. In co-dominant, usually PDA comes from PDA comes from the right side, and uh, PLP usually that is called PL branch or uh, LP branch comes from the left side. And this is the classification of the coronary artery tree that is important for uh, reporting to read the report and also that is important for syntax analysis, syntax score analysis. This is the original syntax picture, but I have uh, taken it for simplification. It is difficult to re remember the 16 segments, but anyhow, EGOA, there is four on the right side, on in the left, total five. Five on the LED and five segment on the LCX. From the ostium of the RCA up to the acute marginal or up to this angulated part of the RCA, divided equally into proximal segment, mid segment, and distal to this up to the uh, bifurcation or up to the PDA branching is the segment three and this is the pda is the segment four that is that should be the pda is the segment four and left end is the segment five lad proximal that is up to the first perforator or first septal branch then first septal branch up to the tip it is equally divided into two that is the mid led distal led and usually this is there is a bend here that is more best seen in the RAO cranial view. That is the separating point between the mid and distal LED. On the LCX, this is up to the first OM, including the first OM is the proximal LCX, and distal LCX is the after last after last OM. And these are the this is the branch, ventricular branch from the left side. So nomenclature of the coronary, that may be the single vessel disease, double vessel, triple vessel disease like this has already been uh, seen in the report. Single vessel disease means one of the major arteries or their major branches that is graftable. Major branches includes the diagonal, OM, PDA, PLB that is seen in the segments. Like in previous segment, there is diagonal that is uh, segment nine. Another diagonal is 10. There is OM that is 12. And there is left uh, ventricular branch that is this. So any of these branches if disease that is called single vessel. Double vessel, two major branch or uh, one major plus 
on major artery plus any on major branches are the double vessel disease. Lippmann actually is a special entity that should be mentioned and that should be treated in different way. Mild lesion, usually diameter stenosis less than 50 millimeter, uh, fifty percent is mild. Moderate is 50 to 70, more than 70 is critical or significant lesion. Total occlusion is 100%. That may be the acute recent tonic. Other, there is other terminology or nomenclature like bifurcation lesion, tersosity, angulation, dissection, aneurysm, ectasia, and microdial breeze. All have got their own description and own definition. So this is the bifurcation, uh, that is the European Bi Bifurcation Club. This bifurcation, uh, actually, uh, some nomenclature you should know, that is the main vessel, main branch, side branch. Left main may be the main vessel, then main branch will be the LAD, side branch will be the LCX. If the a uh, main vessel, then main branch will be the Part of the LED distal to the diagonal and side branch or sometimes called dotted branch is the diagonal and that should be remembered and for true bifurcation at least side branch must be involved within three millimeter of the ostium if side branch is not involved anyway that should not be called true bifurcation that we call sometimes non-true bifurcation or pseudo bifurcation like this is a true bi uh, bifurcation, sometimes called complex bifurcation, because side branch is involved. This is the pseudo bifurcation, because proximal lesion is there, distal lesion uh, in the main branch, but side branch is not any OIDG. So this is called pseudo bifurcation. But this is true bifurcation. This one is also true bifurcation, because distal vessel is involved here, and side branch is also involved here. So this is the classification of the coronary artery lesion. That is very important regarding the uh, prognosis and success rate. Type 1, type A, type B, and type C. Type A includes the discrete lesion less than 10 millimeter, less than 10 millimeter. Type B is 10 to 20 millimeter, and more than 20 millimeter is the type C. Concentric lesion, eccentric lesion, that is easily accessible that is moderate toxicity in the proximal segment, not in the distal segment, remember. Proximal segment is more important for PCI. And excessive toxicity in the proximal segment. Non-angulated lesion. Lesion by itself is not angulated because angulated lesion has got its own significance because it is difficult to treat. Stain may be deformed, difficult to pre-dilate, difficult to post-dilate, and uh, many things. And moderate angulation is 45 to 90 degree within the lesion, extreme angulation is more than 90 degrees. Smooth contour, irregular contour, little or no calcification, moderate to severe calcification, and any degenerative vein graft that is friable lesion is type C. If the vein graft occluded after six months on year, that is not the degenerative. Degenerative means after few years. Absence of thrombus, some thrombus, is type B. And in case of total occlusion, whether it is CTO or acute occlusion, that, that all the type uh, C occlusion. And uh, total occlusion has got other for the subdivision also, but, and further clarification also. And this is on case that is torsosity, severely torsos vessel, type C lesion, because it is calcified, proximal vessel is very much calcified. And this is the lesion that I showed the video before. There is an eccentric lesion here. By lesion itself, it is type A, but as there is a proximally loop-like uh, things, that is, the, there is loop here, that is very torsosity, loop-like torsosity. This part is very much crucial. And this patient I treated with is stain, but is stain uh, passing was very much difficult. Number one, before stent passing, the when I put the wire, the concentrina effect, and after putting the balloon, patient developed uh, no flow, hypotension, bradycardia. So the lesion it's, itself is type A, but the way to the lesion, that is the proximal loop or proximal torsosity, make the things difficult. 
So this is another lesion. This is also type A. Hardly that may be the type B in uh, term of length. This is type A lesion. But if you see, that is the dissection here made by the catheter. So type A lesion that converted into type C. And that patient become unstable also. Catheter was uh, displaced and a uh, lot of things happened for this patient. So sometimes we call it simple. This is a simple uh, PCI, but there is no simple PCI. Any simple PCI may become complex at any time. So this is a lesion. This is a, this is a lesion. If you see the LED lesion seems to be non-significant, especially here, there is no significant layer uh, lesion here. There is a lesion, but seems to be 50 or 60%, not critical anyway. But if we see closely and if we go through the uh, patient, this is a 35 years male doctor, no risk factor, acute coronary syndrome with uh, STTF change in the anterior lead and troponin I was raised. LP was normal. There is a plaque rupture here, dissection or rupture, and there is diastasis just distal to this plaque. So this dye remain for a long time. So this is a, also a risk relation. Dissection, aneurysm, and ectasia. Sometimes that may coexist in the same patient. This is the on the right side of the same patient, young patient also, there is aneurysm. Aneurysm, actually, this is the uh, secular dilatation outside the lumen and instantly dies uh, staining in that part. When the other part of the vessels is clear of dye, this part remains uh, black. So this is the aneurysm. Someone was asking what about the aneurysm. Now this is sorry it is not moving. This one is mo not moving actually, sorry. So now next, uh, dissection and thrombus sometimes may be mistaken. Dissection is a thin flap attached with the vessel wall. And thrombus is usually irregular, rounded, and surrounded by the contrast or by blood. So uh, this, this, this was the case after PCI. It seems to be dissection at the proximal A's of the stent. But when I put the stent there, that was running down. And ultimately, that goes distally, producing no flow to the PDFPLB, and that patient needs suction. So sometimes it may be difficult, but thrombus usually it uh, may be floating. And if it is attached to the wall, only the one side, at least three sides, should be filled by the dye. <coughs> On the other hand, the section is a very thin flap, usually thin flap of uh, either intima or uh, the media and intima both together. This is the breeze. Sometimes patient uh, complaining of angina, effort angina, and breeze sometimes difficult to diagnose. Only the on view sometimes epicranial, sometimes allocranial. This is the two common view that uh, usually microdial breeze is better seen. That may give rise to some arrhythmia and sudden cardiac death also. And other things that sometimes this breeze can be masked by the proximal lesion. And during, as there is proximally tight lesion, this breeze may be masked. And after predilatation, that breeze become obvious. So in that case, we should be very much careful that anyway, stent should not be, even distal edge of the stent should be away from this breeze. This is another case of microdial breeze, very focal, very focal. Only on view can show the microdial breeze here. That is very focal. That patient was very much symptomatic. In other view, breeze cannot be seen. So calcification. So this, this is the case uh, that was done by Fujilamem and that was, seems to be calcium, that seems to be stented on the 
LED seems to be extended seems to be stented on the LED, but actually this is not the stent. This is the calcium. So if you see calcium anywhere in the coronary tree, you should suspect that calcium is other place also that may be hidden that not, may not be seen on the pleuro, but you should suspect that calcium somewhere cal calcium might be anywhere in the coronary artery. Madam did the uh, uh, rotational atherectomy without any hesitating, without any taking risk with uh, cutting balloon or like this. Coronary spasm. This is a very uh, interesting history. That was in 2009. This patient came to me with acute coronary syndrome, non STEMI. I did the angiogram that was normal. Afterwards, he did the angiogram after six months. He did the angiogram in the NICBD with the same complaint. And they showed that there is a concentric lesion in the mid LED that is seen in the epicranial view as well as in the allocranial. This is the still picture. There is an eccentric plaque, but here it looks it is concentric plaque in the cranial view. So it was decided that. PCI should be done and as an ad hoc PCI after giving, you see oil is here. So oiling is done, nitrate given, then lesion went out. Even the spasm segment become larger than the R segments and it also disappears from here. Till now this patient come to me for follow-up. So microvascular disease, this is the slow flow. That may be caused by micro, microvascular disease as in the first C. After giving nitrate, the flow uh, becomes almost normal. It may happen in LVAs or ACM. This is the patient for ACM prepared for uh, alcohol septal ablation. It may happen in complete heart block because of active ventricular dyssynchrony and sometimes severe bradycardia hypotension related to vasopharyngeal syncope and super selective dye injection to one vessel may give the slow flow to the other vessel. Air embolism. Sometimes air and thrombus goes together. This is the patient. Uh, anterior MI because of complete heart block pacemaker was done and lesion was in the mid LED, so most likely that was uh, not reversible. So uh, initially, uh, due to complete heart block, initially permanent pacemaker was done, and after uh, seven days, with the first shot, when the PCI was tried, first shot patient goes into cardiac arrest. After one hour fighting, patient survived till now. The patient is good and coming to follow up. So be careful, initial view, sometimes especially the sheath hub, femoral sheath or radial sheath hub sometimes contain the clot. And when the catheter is uh, pushed through it, that uh, thrombus is stuck at the tip of the catheter. And without proper suction or proper backplash, and if the backplash is inadequate, sometimes it happens if the Y connector is added, and through the Y connector, a regular wire is given, backplash is not proper. So directly it goes to the left main. So you see there is thrombus that is just going. That is the actually fresh thrombus that comes from the catheter only. The similar case I have seen few years back in the Madras medical mission, just after first, first shot, uh, cardiac arrest and uh, she was uh, actually uh, declared dead. Non-selective view. Usually non-selective view usually not, it is not working. Video not working. Sorry, non non selective view 
usually not desirable because of poor visualization of the vessels to analyze the lesion. But sometimes it may be helpful in some cases, like posterior left mendages. In RCA coronal branch, sometimes when collateral is the left system or anomalous LCX from the right or RCA from the left, this may be helpful. So this is the non-selective view. It is not desirable that uh, Mohamed Jaman Sar and other was telling the transradial uh, uh, angiogram sometimes very much difficult to interpret it because of poor visualization of the coronary artery. But sometimes it is helpful. This is the uh, left main because catheter was not in, in uh, uh, difficult to engage the catheter on the left side. Then when I take the non-selective view, the things looks like this. That is a very disastrous. If you want to select the vessel that may produce uh, dissection and patient may go into the arrest. And this is other view that shows that non-selective view collateral is the left system. So super selection, sometimes it may happen, especially for the initials and some on get panic and someone get panic and pull the catheter, but that should not be done. Catheter should be disengaged very gently and excess rotation should be avoided. So this is the coronary artery fistula. This is a very uh, uh, not uncommon, and, but the, because of this fistula and steel phenomena happens to the distal LED, and that may give rise to angina, sometimes LP dysfunction also. Check angiogram or relook re re angiogram. That may be needed for post CABG patient, post PCI patient, sometimes when the uh, angiogram done previously. And the review of past angiogram is very much helpful to compare and for taking decision. In case of ISR or size of the stent, that should be described in the report. In re uh, case of post-CABG, graph number, site of the graph, make the check angio procedure easier. Lot of discussion already been uh, done. And check angiogram for previous left main osteolation, special care should be taken so that catheter does not deform the previous stent. This is the case of post-CVG osteal stenting, but catheter was engaged very smoothly without any manipulation. So this type of case, usual previous PCI report and previous PCI video is very much helpful. If the stent is hanging a lot in the aorta, you should be very much careful. And sometimes I advise, um, in such a case, I had the stent hanging four, five millimeter into the aorta. So this is the syntax score. I will not go in details. This is the uh, things that we uh, usually consider dominancy of the vessel it started from dominancy step on coronary segments, total occlusion, bifurcation or bifurcation, autostellations, and length of the lesion, calcification, thrombus, and diffuse disease. All these things are considered for syntax score. And uh, this is uh, very uh, in uh, short. Lipman has got a score five. And in case of left dominant score six, LED has got 1.5, 2.5, 3.5 from distal to proximal, on to 3.5, irrespective of dominancy. LCX 0.5 to 1 for RCA, all for on for proximal, on for mid, and on for distal, and for all other branches like PDA. PL branch, OM and diagonal, 0 0.5 to 1. So this, if we, if we remember this one, instantly on table, sometimes we can calculate the score, uh, is, uh, syntax score. So this is the usefulness. This is the actually predictor of outcome. Comparison between the PCI and CABG, low score uh, is less than 22. CABG and PCI is equally effective. 
if it is intermediate score, CABG is better for long term. But uh, now a lot of study that uh, make the things controversial. Uh, more than 30, definitively PCI is better. And here the only basal anatomy is considered for uh, syntax score, syntax scoring. Uh, so this is the modification is the syntax two score, clinical syntax score, residual syntax, lot of this. And in syntax two score, uh, along with anatomy of the coronary, age, sex of the patient, LP ejection fraction, COPD, CCR, and peripheral vascular disease leftment all are included. So this is a better predictor than the syntax score old on. So CAG is the gold standard. This is the sensitivity is specificity is 90 to 93%. Uh, it is very, this is very interesting study that was done in China, 97 patient with ischemic cardiomyopathy, comparison study with angiographic findings before heart transplantation with post-op pathological study of coronary artery of uh, the patient after explant disease heart. So explanted disease heart pathology compared with angiographic report just before implantation, before transplantation around uh, within two weeks. They shows that sensitivity and specificity is 90 to 95%. So what is oculo? Uh, there are two terms, oculus stenotic reflex and oculo ischemic reflex. It is to take the stenosis of the patient by stenting after eyeball estimation of the coronary artery lesion without clinical evaluation and evidence-based guideline that developed from large randomized clinical trial and good number of cases that lead to unnecessary or over-treatment. This may give rise to PCI-related early or late complication. On the other hand, the opposite is ocular ischemic reflex, that is the treatment of the ischia by the evidence-based guideline. So with this, I'd like to thanks, uh, especially uh, thanks to my mentor and thanks to all the cath lab technicians and my teachers and my colleagues also. Thank you, Dr. Shuddhattu. So nice, elaborate discussion. I think nothing question left after your presentation. You include all the topics, all the things in this uh, lecture. Thank you. Uh, Wadu sir, few comments, then uh, go to ask question answer. Dr. I, you have said it nicely. Uh, Ashok has shown a lot of cases, a lot of aspects of how we should go uh, in describing, in evaluating the lesions, and also the anomalies, or, uh, including fistulas and other things. And Ashok, you have done very yes, nice. Sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Somir Paudil. Do you hear me? Dr. Sumit? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir, for a very good presentation. I have just one query. Uh, in uh, bypass grafting CAVG, uh, the patency of uh, Lima uh, lasts longer than of Rima. What is the basis? What is the uh, cause behind that? Uh, you see, Lima is uh, that is that is the special vessel, and especially that Lima by name, this is called mammary artery. Mammary artery that supply the mammary gland of the uh, female, and uh, this is the gift of the god. Uh, the Lima is called immortal. Immortal means uh, Lima is never diseased. I don't know what uh, Pajila Madam or Mamiru Jaman sir uh, experience is there. I have never seen any Lima that is diseased. That may be small, but that is never diseased. The disease that happens to the subclavian only. And Lima, when grafted, uh, Lima is not diseased again. This is uh, again immortal. But for ven venous graft, with over time, it becomes degenerate actually. Arterialization, arterialization of the vein and lot of soft tissue uh, develop uh, within the graft vessel. So why now to this, to prevent this arterialization of the vein graft, uh, the new study has come to external uh, stenting, means stent around the lima, 
sorry, extend around the uh, venous graph. Uh, there is on study, they have shown that if stent is placed around the uh, uh, venous graph through and through from proximal to distal, the vessel cannot dilate and arterialization is prevented and that gives the longevity of the venous graft not like that of lima but uh, better than uh, vein graft alone sir my question is lima versus rima not venous graft so that is actually the surgeon's preference lima is close to the led on the left side and rima uh, you have to take a long way from the rima to led but it it is preferable to, uh, to give the rima on the pda rima on the pda khalid mohsin sir do you hear me khalid bhai you have to unmute uh, yeah it's a very Beautiful lecture covering all the aspects. Uh, actually, uh, I have a question to Ashok. We face some uh, problem yeah. when we are uh, imaging a patient with dextrocardia. Yeah. Sometimes yes, those are very small in number, uh, but, uh, but we have some uh, problem in dextrocardia patients. And another thing uh, regarding uh, the patient, uh, we are when we are angio taking the angiogram, sometimes the radiographers are moving the table very rapidly. They want panning, to that is called panning. Panning, yeah, yeah but uh, but sometimes the panning is not good when we are looking for uh, seeing the collaterals. It is uh, recommended to keep the table steady, but they are yes. trying sometimes they are trying to have a rotational type of angiogram. With yes, normal, yes. Uh, this is a this is a real Thank problem. You. Uh, so last and question. Yes, sir. Just let me finish and then you answer my question. So panning actually sometimes required. Suppose you see in the suppose epicranial view or aerocranial view on the right coronary artery, you engage the catheter, you uh, take the view and you are seeing that there is some collateral to the LED, then you have to go more towards right. Otherwise, you cannot see the LED, PDA to LED, uh, uh, you cannot see. So panning is sometimes required, but definitely that will reduce the resolution of, of your uh, video. That means resolution of your uh, angiographic view. So panning, sometimes it is helpful and sometimes uh, it, it is not desirable. Uh, and uh, whole heart in a picture is especially helpful after the PCI, especially CTO. If you want to see the distal vessel, whether there is any perforation or leaking, the whole vessel, uh, whole heart should be in a film, uh, in a film only. That is very important. But, and the first question regarding what you are telling, sir? First question yes. regarding? Imaging in a dextrocardia patient. Cardia. Dextrocardia, this is, this is the dextrocardia uh, that is not too tough. Just ask your uh, technician uh, to make the mirror image. Left will go on the right, right will go on the left. Then you can do the uh, procedure as usual way. So uh, dextrocardia uh, catheter engagement, not so tough actually. Actually, I have done angioplasty in uh, dextrocardia patient twice. And the thing is, why you have to do the clockwise, you have to do the counterclockwise. That's it. You have to remember. Rotation is, a, yeah, yes, definitely. The rotation uh, during manipulation of catheter should be different, yes. Uh, your technician uh, will do a mirror image and you will, uh, you will have to do the rotation of the catheter in opposite direction. Like uh, if you do the femoral uh, approach, you have to move the catheter as if you are doing through the right radial. And uh, Osho, Sir. Uh, the question from Nepal was, uh, why lima patency is better than rima? I think one of the thing is that when we have to use the rima, it needs more handling because it's across the chest. You, have to, uh, you are cutting it across and you have to bring it from the right side to the left side. And that's why if you put a rima graph to the left side, it is more handling and perhaps that's why the patency is lesser. But when you are using rima to the PDA, 
I'm yes. not sure it's patency. Yes. Can I can I add something? Yes. Yeah. Actually, the metabolic demand of the left anterior descending artery is more than the that of the right coronary and the circumflex artery because it supplies more muscle mass, and that's why. It it is been uh, shown in some studies that the nitric oxide delivery uh, is uh, subsequent. It, it's uh, significantly more through the left internal mammary artery to the LAD when it is used in the LAD. But as the rima is never used in the LAD, it is attached to the circumflex or the right coronary artery. Their metabolic demand is not that high, so the delivery of nitric oxide is not. That uh, uh, much as compared to the LED, that leads to a better patency of the liver because of the delivery of the nitric oxide. There are some studies have shown that. Mm, very interesting. Thank Thank you. You. Dr. Anis Lawal, Dr. Anis Lawal, do you hear me? Dr. Anis from uh, Chidaya. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's a very interesting session. I have learned a lot. And I, I think fellows are they are really really very uh, lucky enough because we have to learn this thing by different attending different fellows course, but they are now getting in a, in, a, in a, everything in one box, so this is very nice very interesting. So I, I have a little question to uh, uh, up to this presenter, Dr. Ashok sir. Uh, what is the best thing for the left main uh, when you give stand in the left main ostium? What is the yes, best? Yes. Left main ostial. Yeah, not to miss or not to overhang. What is what is the oh, best the the, Actually, what happened? Left main ostium is very difficult issue to treat with the stent. Uh, left main uh, may be horizontal. Left main may, may be vertical, and sometimes left main may go upwards. If it is horizontal, then upper border. Uh, that means upper circumflex of the left main of the ostium and lower circumflex of the left main of the ostium. Are at the same level, so stent can be placed well without any overhanging uh, in one side or other. But in case of other two direction, when it is directed upwards, means uh, left main originate from down towards up, or it is downwards, then to cover the upper part of the circumference of the ostium, you may have. To uh, overhang the lower part of the circumflex, but best view is the allocranial, yes. and other view is the apicodal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the normal angiographic view and during stenting, the difference is normal angiogram you are uh, putting the catheter tip within the left main, so gives a better view. Less dye goes into the aortic ostium, the the aortic sinus, but in case of Stenting when you put the stent within the left main, the most of the dye that you will give that will remain within the coronary sinus. So that make the things difficult to see the ostium. So anyhow, two view that is most important: allocranial and epicordal. Thank you. Nice to see, Dr. Khalikar John. Right, Dr. Khalikar John. I, I I think Anish's question yeah. is a little bit different. Yeah. Thank you. I think Anish's question is a little bit different, right? Anish, uh, yes, sir. I think a little bit different in that sense is that is the ostium of the left, not the left main itself. The whole, not the whole left main, but the ostial left main to to diagnose, to stand, to parvicia is really a horrible thing. I can tell because the, to how much you will cover, how much it will overhang, how much it will be the beyond the ostium. This is very big. So I think that the LAO 40 is, is, is the view everybody is telling, is the standard view they take, but not all the time LAO 40 is telling you the ostium properly. So the LAO portal and also the epic portal views. All these views, three or four views you need at that time to see the ostium, and at the same time, what I usually do, I take a very good sinus view to see the sinus, the border of the sinus. I'm requesting that the it is parallel to the sinus. Is mute, mute uh, the uh, television. So that one is very important. I think the plan is interesting because that one is a very dangerous thing to cover the ostium. Thank you, thank you, Sajibai. Dr. Kalikajivan, do you hear me? 
can hear you. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Ashok Bhakta, for a brilliant presentation. Uh, extensive works on the coronary angiogram. The uh, majority of the participants get benefit from it, not only the fellows, but all who are working in the field of international cardiology. Uh, to explain something about, I will request Ashok Bhakta about the, which view should be taken first and why, number one. Number two, can you tell something to the fellows about the damping and the ventricularization and what precaution you have to take for taking further CNA after uh, during the damping and ventricularization if it happens during the CNA? So first question is which view uh, should be taken first? Yes. For, uh, for left? For left coronary artery, it usually we engage the catheter in AP view. Then from AP to RAO caudal, usually taken. And sometimes it actually it, uh, differ from uh, cath lab to cath lab. Someone take, uh, even in our cath lab, sometimes after engagement, AP caudal is taken or LO caudal is taken. But anyhow, caudal view should be the first one for left system. And for right coronary artery, it is the LAO view is the first view that is taken, followed by allocranial, then epicranial or areocranial. And for left system, for the right system, right coronary artery usually engaged in the LAO view. Uh, Ashok, uh, can I add uh, one point to this level? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, uh, for fellows, uh, it is uh, should for fellows, but not for senior. It is mandatory, there is one view called global assessment view. Global assessment view, AP view, not uh, uh, fully engaged uh, in the left system. It is only for left system, not for right system. Right has already mentioned by Ashok nicely. On the left system, it is a global assessment view. Which, why it is called global? Because this view, steep AP, not engaging the catheter, few millimeter distance from the ostium, it exclude the austere relation, it exclude the relation between LCS and LAD, whether you will take the subsequent wave to deep inspiration or not, because LED and LAD, LCS relation is very important. If it is the same relation, it is other than if you, you take the inspiration, its LCS is down. So it is separate. If LCS is already up, if you take, if you instruct the patient to respire, the LCS come down to LED and it's it's, it's not necessary and uh, it's uh, not good. And if it is in the same level, inspiration will separate them. So I think to me, for fellows, the global assessment view, that means the Ashok uh, already told the Amra Kathitar, the Boshai, AP view, the cast flash view at a room, even at a not cine, not a floor. It should be cine. So that uh, you can uh, recheck whether there is austral lesion or austral puzzle, or there is the relation in the uh, LCF and LED, or proximal LED, or OSTL, there is any severe relation or not. So global assessment view is, uh, I think, uh, every, every fellow should start with this view. Or other, if somebody not need to take it, in a, just it flow to see that any catastrophe will happen or not, or like this. Sir, again, it depends on the assessment of the patient. For simplification, audio caudal view or an AP caudal view is sufficient enough to assess the left main as well as proximal LED and LCX lesion. But when there is clinically, there is every doubt about the severity of the disease, maybe a case of left main or a triple vessel proximal lesion, then this what the Professor Amitabha Research said that there may be a global assessment. But for simplification, it's better, but they also said one of the caudal view, either AP caudal. Or a audio caudal view is sufficient enough to exclude the left vein? Definitely, audio caudal should be first view, but for fellows to see what situation in the left system. So, this is if there is strong view, the patient may have left vein lesion clinically. Do you hear me? Actually, the thing, the left. AP caudal or RAO caudal, uh, sometimes hot stellic vertical heart and horizontal heart. COPD patient, long thin person, uh, RAO caudal is better. But if the patient is obese, 
diaphragm is elevated, apex is directed towards left, first view should be epicordal. Yes, so damping and ventricularization. Can you please... Oh, damping and ventricularization. During the initial, who are doing the coronary angiogram at the initial part of the now, the most important thing to Dr. Ashok, the most important yes. thing is to do that, that he should not be the maid of the radiographer or the technician because the technicians have got a mindset. They yes, 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 exactly, exactly. They know exactly. that which exactly. views they will take. Right. Yes, yes, so, definitely. But it should definitely. not be. So whenever, like today, 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 the same one fellow was doing the case, and I was just getting a little bit annoyed because the LED, uh, when you, because you know the AP portal or RO portal, whatever it is, the three portal view, it is nearer to the AP, right? So it's better to take the II closer, very easily and very fast. So you can take that. So AP, RO, AP portal or RO portal or LO portal, exactly. which you uh. also take. And when you see something, some lesions there in LED, you can predict that one. Then next, if it is in LED, let's go next to the epicranial view to see the LED. Because lesion is LED, you are predicting there and your severity of the lesion. So first you have to know, you have to think in the eye of a intervention cardiologist or a or reperfusionist, like, like you have to have a reperfusion whether by CAVG or PCR. So go for the next view which is essential to understand now, immediate. So tell the radiographer, go to the epicranial view now because I have seen the LED lesion. So that is the way you will change this. So which one is first or which one is second? It's not the question. The question is that nearer to the, you will have to be independent from the radi radiograph. Uh, thank you. I think one thing is important to see the pressure wave. Always see the yes. pressure of the duty fellows. You should push off yes. on the monitor to see the pressure curve. Always. Dr. Akhandu Kastadu Jawan, please add. Asadu Jawan, do you hear me? Okay. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, both the presenter present their papers. Uh, that is, uh, topics very nicely, elaborately. And I have uh, gone through all the lectures very minutely. And I think I, I, uh, I have learned a lot and uh, all the fellows also get benefited. I uh, want comments, uh, one or two comments uh, first uh, for uh, the, uh, the after presentation of Dhimanda. Actually, what I have seen, I have seen the, all the coronary anomalous was uh, cannulated by transfemoral apples. So like me, all the radialists become frustrated or uh, actually, uh, what I have seen, uh, what I, we, uh, we do in our cat lab, uh, I think most of the uh, coronary anomalous can be overcome by radial approach. Uh, what I personally believe that uh, for the left uh, anom uh, sided anomalous, I usually use the Jutkin's left, among, um, um, and most of the cases I use uh, a guiding catheter rather than a, a diagnostic, and because the guiding catheter is soft and I can manipulate it very easily and undersized, so that is the five is uh, most preferable size. And on the right side, I prefer the uh, M plus, uh, that is L uh, one or two, but uh, uh, I don't feel any uh, uh, problem for uh, engaging or uh, procedures uh, of any coronary anomalous. And uh, regarding the issue of the M plus, I have seen uh, the, what we uh, encountered in our daily practice, that's a uh, problem not related to the engagement actually, uh, but what happened during the disengagement of the catheter? What I uh, uh, advise for the young fellows uh, that if uh, you want to in, uh, disengage the catheter, you should in, uh, disengage it just after placement of the wire and balloon. And if you uh, disengage the catheter by placing the balloon, there is no chance of dissection of the ostium. And uh, lastly, last comment after, uh, after the Washington's lecture, actually uh, uh, for the, clear visualization of the coronary tree, one important issue is the catheter support. That is the primary support and the secondary support and the coaxial alignment of the catheter. And I think all these uh, topics are discussed uh, very elegantly. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, IPDI. Thank you, Mohashin, and thank you, 
Professor uh, Abdul Odud sir. Thank you again. Uh, Dr. Haiwullah Salim from Silet. Dr. Haiwullah Salim, do you hear me? Yes, I am hearing you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Maushin Bhai. In a single word, it is very much excellent session. I hope the, uh, the for the for those the program is designed. The fellows will be more benefited, and also we refreshed ourselves from these uh, lectures. And the two speakers nicely elabor and elaborately described their session. Uh, and the also expert in this field in the country and outside the country also comment on this. And this will be the more benefited the fellows and the some tricks for the also the uh, experts. And I like to take uh, thanks the. This, uh, I will take this opportunity to thank the to whom make this platform for exchanges our views, the IPDI admin, Professor Dr. Abdul Wadud Chudri and Dr. Maushin Ahmed and other co-chairmen and the course organizers for making this platform and thus we can share our views and ideas from home and abroad. So I think another already more of the discussing everything and uh, I have one suggestion already that because Today's lecture is basically to the more basics of the algebra. When is to the fellows or students or experts going in the field, the base, basics is most important. Uh, but uh, these two lectures, I think this two lectures or three lectures when given, I think the fellows can, when it's difficult to continue their strive for the knowledge. And I don't know, IPJ is more you know, expert in, in the managing this program. But uh, for my feelings that if the one lecture, is, uh, if one lecture, the, I, the fellows uh, can contribute more and the expert- Concentration is more. difficult. Uh, because uh, among, I think uh, if there is no any, any other problem in the future, uh, IPDA can arrange the one topics. It may be lengthened and they can, and the student men can, can more accommodate on this program. Uh, I don't know why IPD is more a expert in this field and can make the arrangement like this way. And anyway, I thanks uh, again the, all my other panelists and experts and the IPD admin for inviting me for the panelist here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Silly. Uh, Dr. Adif Rahman, uh, any question left in the chat box? Mm, thank you, sir. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Dhiman sir and Ashok sir for extensive discussion. I think almost everything has been covered. Uh, one thing uh, missing that was asked by Dr. Khalegu Jaman sir, that is uh, pressure damping and ventricularization. I think few words for the fellows will be benefited for this example. Few words related to ventricularization and damping. Yeah, Dr. Ashudatto, do you hear me? Uh, Dr. Ashudatto? Or anyone else? Uh, uh, Adit sir, please, a uh, few comments. Damping and ventilation. Dr. Adit sir. Uh, Hello. 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 That means you have put the catheter in the roof. The orifice opening is uh, occluded. So you have to just have to pull back a little bit. And damping is when you are embedding the flow into the corner is significant. So basically can just be going down. One thing I would always ask before engaging the catheter, have a look at the monitor. Look at the heart rate, look at the pressure wave, look at the pressure level then engage and find then then again have a look at the pressure wave because pressure wave instant recognition of if something is wrong in there you may not remember the absolute value but the pressure wave is imprinted in the mind visual impression so uh, any damping or ventilation you can readily amend it uh, professor Adu, uh, can i add one line for the fellows yes yes sir um, uh, the, every fellow should keep the mind that yeah, before engagement of the coronary catheter, 
the ECG and pressure curve should be keep in memory. If there is not extra monitor, we yes. in, 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 in abroad, we saw every place there is four monitor in the inside catheter. One monitor is fixed before engagement of the catheter and they, are, they will follow uh, throughout the procedure, angiogram, angioplasty, what have been changed uh, before and after right now, present situation and the uh, pre-situation before starting the uh, procedure. Even in angiogram, uh, what was the ECG as a well change to RBB, change to RBB, brady or tracky or ventricular pressure, uh, pressure curve is uh, going to be distorted like this. So if we have not in cat lab more uh, uh, monitor, every fellow should keep in mind what it was before starting or before engagement catheter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Officer. Nicely. They always see the pressure monitor. Always see the pressure monitor. Thank you, everybody. I think it's a long discussion. Uh, excellent presentation by Dr. Diman Porik, then Oshud Dokto, detailed discussion. I think all the fellows and also faculties, then it is also uh, benefited from your lecture. And this will, uh, this lecture uh, also kept in our archive. Uh, you see? Uh, you plus only go to the website. It is the www.hello.health. Just write down www.hello.health. If you forgot, Healthy Heart, Happy Life Organization. Then scroll down, click on the IPDI Catholic Manual Series. Then subscribe to it and click on the playlist. You saw the previous lecture, one, two, and two days, three lecture. So you, for the fellows, you can easily enjoy these sessions. Uh, Thank you, everybody. Professor Badu, sir, please conclude the session, sir. Uh, Professor Abdul Badu, sir, do you hear me, sir? Oh, again, the same problem. It's not yes, working, sir. my speaker. Uh, thank you, Mexico, for uh, doing the a tremendous job for last five months. Uh, doing the uh, Professor Momonito, sir. Sir, Momonito, sir, please, uh, last comment, then Badu, sir. Uh, Monitor, sir. Do you hear me, sir? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, now it is almost 12 o'clock, three hours. Yes, sir. Started with 130 participants, now still 66 participants. Is there yeah. Watching this program. Means that uh, both uh, Wadud and Mohsin achieved uh, the standard of your program. So much so, everybody is interested. About this. Very good. Keep it on. And as, as usual, said that I think uh, we should not be so hurry to cover many things in short period. One lecture, a lot of discussion, and and that is, I think interaction will become much more. And our target is basically the fellows. So I think one lecture and discussion is good thing. And uh, regarding today's program in general, I speak about fellows. Don't go cath lab without knowing nothing about the patient. Right from the ECG, echo, risk factor, detail. Uh, you should go through then only. Nowadays, is the problem is that everybody is just more interested to handle the catheter, which is last part of the total game. Please, please. Uh, if you forget something in the history, you may forget many things in the diagnostic procedure, and sometimes you may repeat it again. And uh, secondly, uh, don't hesitate to take assisted help from your colleague. Don't think that you are the last person, you, nobody can do it as you have not done, as not doing it. Definitely you take, take help from your colleague and also senior cat lab technician, not be guided and governed by them, but also take uh, advice from them. Because many of the technicians, they are seeing uh, the case of many operators, but you may not see the most hard thing what they have seen. So you can also take assistance from senior technician. Always patient safety is very important. And I request the fellows, 100 patient, you should write down the report in hand, in hand, not just typing. Just make a, uh, a, a, a notebook, 
write down detail about 100 patient case at least it will make you practice and you will not forget the detail about the coronary angiography after that you can depend on your uh, medical secretary but to know yourself you must write down 100 patient history by yourself thank you once again and Mausin and and all other panelists both including Waldut. Uh, really i enjoyed the program thank you very much thank, thank you thank you, thank you. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. Uh, I think everybody has enjoyed it and it's a long session and we'll be taking under consideration the suggestion that one lecture long discussion uh, let's hope for the best and I think it's enough been said today and beautiful lectures given by two very good uh, scholars thank you both of you and all the panelists who have given so, such nice comments and such nice contribution, including our eminent senior cardiologists. Thank you all and good night. Thank you. And again, thank you. we have to think, uh, thank the, our logistic support providers. They have been doing it, Beximco is doing it quite nicely. Thank you. Thank you, Beximco. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Yeah. Assalamualaikum. Good night, sir. Assalamualaikum. Thank you. Thank you, Mohsin. 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 Thank you